Welcome, welcome, everybody, to the 2024 Canadian Scrabble Classic. Matt Canick here doing commentary, and I couldn't be more thrilled to be joined by defending North American champion Josh Sokol. Josh, how are you doing? What's up, Matt? I'm so happy to be here. I'm wearing my Canadian um, World shirt from 2023, and you're wearing a Canadian shirt, too. So it's all Canada tonight. Really excited to... Uh, to join you here. Uh, we may be uh, broadcasting from Texas, or at least I may, but uh, got to represent Canada as best I can. For those unfamiliar with the Canadian Scrabble Classic a tournament put on by Josh Greenway and his fabulous team, a 15-game tournament that begins on Friday night. We'll have a bunch of games on Saturday and a morning session on Sunday. This event is not open just to Canadians, uh, so we will see prominent North uh, American experts in the field as well. Uh, the first one we'll be featuring in round one is Joey Malik of Maine. So uh, not restricted to Canada, but we will be doing a lot of Canada themed uh, images and fun stuff. And reluctantly, I will be calling the last letter of the alphabet a Z all weekend with respect to my Canadian friends out there. Yeah, uh, this is the third edition of the Canadian Scrabble Classic. In 2022, we had at least one American winner in the Collins division last year. We also had an American winner myself in the top NWL division. Uh, I'm also Canadian though, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, uh, lots of lots of fun people are going to be featured today and tomorrow and Sunday. So yeah, Maine is basically Canada, right? <laughs> right. Um, so just to give you all a little preview of the field, at least NWL field, that's what we're showing you tonight. Uh, features Joey Malik coming off a second place finish at the North American Championship, bested only by uh, the guy in the square right next to me. Uh, Michael Fagan, who won the North American Championship in 2022. Max Panich, who has been on an absolute tear over his last few tournaments. Um, he might be my favorite to win this thing just with his recent results. Jason Lee who has finished, uh, he lost the championship game of a Nationals, I believe, back in 2015. Uh, so lots of star power here, but don't sleep on Chris Sykes. Don't sleep on John Stardom, who nearly won the Canadian National Championship several years ago, um, as well as some other fun names in the field we're excited to see as well. So uh, lots of stars here at the CSC for 2024. Yeah, uh, super exciting stuff. Um, I'm, I'm happy to commentate. I also... Would have been really happy to play against this field. Uh, got some dark, dark horses. Haven't played John Stardom in a while. Uh, yeah, lots of lots of strong players. And uh, I guess, are we ready for game one yet? Maybe. We are almost know. ready for game one, uh, according to our production team on the ground. So uh, we will get there uh, just as soon as I get the cue. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and preview over there right now. And uh, you can see round one, Joey Malik, the one seed from Maine. But he's going to have to go through Agnes Kramer to start this tournament off the way he wants to. And Agnes, I had the pleasure of meeting up at the Niagara Falls tournament last May. Uh, she's something fierce. She has really been on a tear, especially since pandemic. She plays a lot online. Uh, a longtime ISC player moved over to Woogles, and I see her on there nearly every day. Um, she made some brilliant plays against me and nearly beat me despite me drawing the bag on her. So I'm excited to see a little bit more from Agnes and uh, we'll get, uh, she'll get her chance to try to knock off an expert in round one. Josh, what do you have to say about these players? Yeah, um, like, like you said, Agnes is uh, definitely somebody that can beat anybody, can outplay anybody. She's won, um, she's won many online events i run a tournament every monday a six minute per side tournament she's won that three times so uh yeah definitely a fierce player and i'm really excited to to get this started and see see what they speaking of getting started us. let's do it let's uh give the players the okay looks like they have tiles on their rack so maybe we want to get these tiles squared or maybe they've already been squared i'll let the team on the ground figure that out but uh, hopefully they draw better racks than those in front of them. And hopefully, looking at Agnes's rack right now, hopefully we don't have any of those players who just put their letters in random orientations. All right, Joey does get to go first in round one, and he is going straight into the bags. Um, and here we are, off to the races at the 2024 Canadian Scrabble Classic. 
A D E E E P Y for Joey. This looks promising coming out of the bag, but that's too many E's. So Josh, uh, the five letter payee is oh, what yeah. Joey has sent up. I think this is a, uh, you've, you've got to play it right. Take your time, make sure yeah. there's nothing else. But payee stands out as the obvious best play here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely worth worth uh, worth the points here. You could consider playing just I E Y E to keep the the better four tile leave, but this is well worth it. And uh, yeah, Joey hesitates a little bit, but plays it. I'm used to making opening plays in under thirty seconds, so maybe a little bit jittery, right? Just like <laughs> <laughs> right, I got those stream jitters too. Just kidding, Joey, no stranger to stream after being on stream for the entire North American Finals. Um, best of five. That was a, a really good set of five games. Go watch it if you haven't yet. Um, I'm not able to see Agnes in the bracket right now, so I can't offer any analysis, but I think we're going to get that fixed in just a moment. looks like it might be pointing at the table instead of at yeah. the rack. I think, uh, I think that no, camera got knocked a little bit. There are always lots of jitters at the beginning of a tournament, right, Matt? Like, uh, could be the people jittery, could be the you know, the stream as well. Um, I know that it took me a really long time to just be relatively calm at the beginning of a tournament. Um, but we see Joy coming to, oh, okay, this looks very good. Looks like a very good play from Agnes. Just oh, uh, Joy. Yeah, Joy holding T-I-N-G, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice play yeah. from Agnes there, nice start. You can play it on top or on bottom. Doesn't really matter. It's the same score. And now we slide back over to Joey. B C D E E I P on his rack. Uh, quick equity play of a uh, bicep beneath payee yeah. is uh, Quackle's number one static choice. But are you okay exposing that triple word in this situation, Josh? Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God, look at uh, yeah, definitely put. Sorry, <laughs> let's just let's focus on the first rack. Uh, B, the B in second position is really not a big deal. If you're worried about putting a B in a in a triple lane, uh, you would have to have it like higher up than the triple. Uh, that way, like most most words with B like start with B. So I'm really not worried at all about putting a B there. I mean, you could get hurt sometimes, but it's really a risk that's that's worth taking if it's the top play with with the leaves. So yeah, look at Agnes's rack. That's, oh my God. That is, that is a lot of egg. That is a lot of egg that she has drawn, but this is going to give her begging. She was begging for a way out of this terrible rack. And I think she's just found it. So uh, I believe that's the series of events we're going to see. Yeah. She's got it set up. There's, there's nothing else for her. So make sure she doesn't miss a bingo. And then begging comes down a nice bailout from a terrible GGG draw 42 points for Agnes. And uh, she will now lead seventy-two to fifty-three. Yeah, uh, yeah but this Joey, is, uh, perfect for Agnes. the first. Blank. Joey finding the first blank, not perfect for Agnes, as Joey's gonna hit her with a bingo. A tons of options available to him. Um, the highest scoring available: seventy-seven pointers, overlapping or underlapping payee. Uh, worried or word? W h i r r e d are those uh, 77 point bingos. Uh, when you get a rack like this, Josh, are you just trying to play a bingo? Do you want to make sure you're not missing anything to or from the E on the center uh, square? Or are you just going to play word really quickly? Yeah, I'm definitely just trying to bingo here, if that's, that's your question. It uh, doesn't seem like there's there's any way to score enough to uh, forgo a bingo. But yeah, I'm, I'd be looking, of course, from or to the, the E and payee. And then if I can't find anything, yeah, I'd, I'd look for stuff like uh, like Joey has on his rack, wordier, and then I might see that I could switch the R and the D and play worried. And then I might see word uh, if yeah. I'm really in top shape, W-H-I-R-R-E-D, uh, which might just be slightly better than the other two options. But I do want to mention um, extensions of begging. Um, isn't Phila begging a word like P H I L A or like, isn't, is there more than one? I feel like there might be, uh, so that might be really, really cool to see because you don't see the word beg or begging very often. So no, yeah, I, I don't think that's bizarre. a word. I think there's, there's, there's just, just going to be, oh no, there's, there's two things that go in front of begging. One of them is just the uh, O-U-T out. for out yeah. begging, but also you can put an A in front of it. 
Oh, just a begging. So, axe right. and a begging is going to be like 80. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if somebody dropped that, this is going to be a deep word knowledge question. I have never seen that before. I accidentally had my thing set to Collins, and I'm like, oh, that's a neat Collins hook. No, that's a TWL hook. Wow. Yeah, so that's yeah, going to yeah. come begging. up. Whoa. Oh, and Joey draws Whoa. the second blank. So he might already have like keel hail, something like keel hail through the E. Oh my gosh. Uh, but yeah, wow. we see that he played wordier, uh, sacrificing uh, one point. And the reason he did that over playing worried or word, probably he saw at least worried, but he didn't want to put the D in that position because there are many more two letter words that start with D than with R. You can only play R E. Um, underneath the the r and, and wordier and hit the triple so that's a defensive choice and i think it's well worth doing because otherwise yeah I mean, that was a, yeah i think it's a good yeah, choice. very interesting one point sacrifice but i think he's going to make up that one point and more in the punishes that he doesn't give up and uh this rack i think a good example of what could have happened that won't happen i mean fast would have played for about 45 and it, instead it doesn't because ra is invalid but da is so, uh, you know, great choice by Joey. But shifting over to Agnes, she has two bingos on this rack. Both are tough. Um, both are tough to spot. One of them is the relatively kind of new-ish word tartufos, yeah. um, which I believe is uh, Italian for truffle. Um, that one I would have a hard time putting the S on because tartuffi is also valid in the real Italian plural of that word. The other one is through the E, and it's one I'm certain I've studied, but <laughs> I forgot. Um, out feast plays through the E as well for 74. So out feast for 74, tartufos for 62, the two bingos for Agnes. And also notably, she has that O-U-T combination for out begging, which would be 45 if she doesn't spot the bingos. All three of those are tough plays. Let's see if Agnes Definitely. is able to find one here. Yeah, this is this is a tough spot, and Agnes is taking a bit longer, uh, which makes perfect sense. But um, yeah, the, the bingos are tough to see. I mean, out feast, you might see that, but not know if it's a word. Tartufos, yeah, maybe you, you've studied it, maybe you haven't, maybe you don't know if Tartufo takes an S. So she doesn't seem to be seeing any of the candidate plays here. Um, she looks like she wants to underlap the D-I-E with oft or aft. Uh, but yeah, out begging as well, just such a hard play to spot. Sort of like, yeah, you don't see these extensions, 10 letter word extensions very often. So this play, very definitely a valid play. It's uh, it's an underlap, but it, it's defensive as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of it. But yeah, definitely had a couple better options. It's always tough too, to spot those plays. Like you said, rust at the beginning of a tournament's a thing. And I... Words I'm 98% of anywhere else. When I'm on board one, I become 50% on them. So I feel the struggle of being board one. I've been there too. But crucially, Joey had numerous playable bingos, and Agnes just blocked every single one of them. Uh, yeah. He had some awesome stuff. Rake Hell played down from the R for a gazillion points. Keel Hail and Hell Kite. All these very low probability bingos that Joey almost certainly knows. He's that good and that deep in the lexicon. Um, and now nothing. He's got nothing at all. So a big swing from Agnes. Well, she missed a bingo. She stopped Joey from getting a bingo this turn. And I think she might even come out ahead on that exchange because of it. Uh, wild. Uh, yeah, big swing. I, I just want to point out what could have happened, because this is a word that, if you're watching right now, will stick with you forever. Joey's highest scoring bingo would have been Rake Hell, R-A-K-E-H-E-L-L, -L, down from the R in Wordier. Does that take, does that, that take a, a Y or something? That takes a Y. So Rake Hell <laughs> and Rake Hell, that would have been just the sickest like word knowledge flex if that series of events had happened in a different universe. But alas, no Rake Hell, no Rake Helly. But if you're watching the stream, R-A-K-E-H-E-L-L -L, and a back Y. You're going to win a challenge on that someday if you play for the next 50 years. Keep it going. Jeez, All right. that's, that's incredible. So, okay, we see Cleek come down keeping HL, uh, keeping HS blank, was it? No, HL blank, right, for Joey. That's a very strong play. Um, and yeah, this game has been very interesting so far because we have this a begging hook that 
I don't know if either player has spotted. I'm pretty sure Agnes hasn't, because I think she would have played at already with with a begging. And Joey hasn't drawn an A yet. And there's the out begging extension. It's pretty crazy. Uh, very, I don't know. I, I haven't seen a game like this in a while. I feel like it's just kind of weird. And with those all those bingos that were just blocked, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't know. If I were Agnes, I would probably play TAU here next to the E and the K and Cleek. But, uh, yeah, TAU yeah, next know. to the EA League, making ET and KA really strong play. She sets up both the back S and the back T that she's holding on to, keeping great bingo prone letters. You score 16 this turn, and uh, you're planning to thwack a 60 or an 80 or 90 point bingo in that triple line next turn if it stays available. Oh, but instead oh, she's going to take this final point. Okay. Oftis scores 29 as opposed to just 16 for TAU. So that's what she opts for here. Uh, but that AATU leave, uh, perhaps holding on to a begging. Or more likely, I think she's just trying to score a lot of points right here. And that's what she's able to do. Uh, it's going to put Agnes at 119 to Joey's 151. And Joey's found all consonants into that blank. So he's going to have a tough turn for himself here. I think. Wow, he's just very I don't know, quickly eight, eight. playing Gled. A H and a begging using the blank was fifty three, <laughs> but if you're Joey, I leave that spot alone until yeah, I get a real A. There are so many more I can draw. If I know the word and I don't think my opponent does, I'm just waiting. And there's the A. So we'll get to see next turn um, if Joey knows this word. But um, even if he does, look what he's drawn into: thrashed. Um, wow. Like, like, wow. this is crazy. <laughs> so the play of what Gled already seems kind of weird to me. I would have played just EDH from one of the E's and Cleek to score a little bit more, keep a very good leave. But Joey's kept the H, which is a good tile, and he's drawn a second one, and yet he can still play a bingo. And I don't see Agnes blocking this. This is going to be, I think, game if he gets this down. Very close to it. I mean, if you're Agnes, when you play a player as good as Joey and he draws both blanks in the first, you know, three turns and you're not able to bounce to a bingo lead, it's 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 hard to win those games. You know, certain things have to happen for you to beat a player as good as Joey Malik. And uh, this is this is not that series. So, uh, yeah, it could be game over. Thrashed is going to be just a killer score. And there's no reasonable play from Agnes that blocks it. Although, I don't know. There's a lot of players out here who see double U's and they just play 2-2 two, two for four. Yeah, that, that could be. Yeah, we might see 2-2. Two, two. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only play I, that I think is reasonable that blocks Thrashed. I mean, obviously, we're sitting here, we know jo Joey has, so we kind of are like rooting for 2-2 two, two because yeah, if Joey gets Thrashed down, the rest of the game might not be that interesting. <laughs> um, but if that's blocked... The question is, will Joey see the A hook on begging? I, I man, this is one of the games where like I wish I was in my opponent's head, just to like, because it could be that Joey has seen a begging and isn't sure if it's a word. Same with Agnes. Like I really want to know, rack their brains to see like if they're aware. And I, I don't know. It might stay there the whole game. Yeah, I mean, the way Agnes has played, she's had both out-begging and a-begging. I think maybe she hasn't spotted them, or, I mean, I wouldn't know the word a-begging. Um, it's got three Gs. I'm going to study that last if I ever get that deep in the dictionary. She's picking up T-A-U, which is what we thought she was going to play maybe last turn. So looks like she might be looking to stack those above wordier, um, yeah. T-O-E, A-R, and Udo. Makes some sense. Keep the board closed. That seems to have been her MO this game. Limit Joey's opportunities. But that dangling T out there, going to give Joey 95. Or Joey can just play AH and a begging for 59. And then hold the blank for next turn. Joey's in commanding position in this game. Yeah, and Agnes just exchanges, oh, which is a very reasonable game. play. Um, now the question is, is this game going to stay alive? Uh, because... Joey, what is, wait. He's going to play AH. Gonna, oh my gosh. Him. What? Yeah. I like it. 59? This is 59. How much is thrashed? 95. 
What? That's pretty crazy. I mean, I know why he's doing this. He's doing this because he knows the word and Agnes, he's worried that Agnes knows the word and it's such a humongous spot. But like, wow, the way that she's played this, shouldn't he assume that maybe, I don't know, she hasn't played an A. This is, this is really interesting. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I, I can't tell you for sure what the right thing to do was. I mean, you've got to play off your opponent. Is there any chance Agnes knows this and plays it? Um, you, you've got to figure that spot's going to stay there all game, I think, if you're Joey. She's already – well, actually, she hasn't shown you an A. She's been only right. one to two per turn. But, all right, she is going to challenge. I would do the same thing. What on earth? There's no a bag as a four. Yeah. This is just a really strange front hook. And Joey Malik flexing exactly why he just finished second at the North American Championship. Because who knows stuff like that except people who have devoted this much time to the game. This is impressive from Joey. And it comes up green. Oh, man, that's going to be tough for Agnes. Joey almost definitely going to draw a bingo on his next draw. Never well, mind he, he drew MM. M -M. So he's going to play HM, I think, underneath the ET and the RE on the right side of the board. Oh, yeah. And yeah, he's going to need a vowel or something to, to bingo the turn after. But yeah, I totally understand this challenge uh, for the exact reasons you said. I'm just like myself, like I know the word. I wouldn't be sure if it was valid, but like I didn't see it. Like you don't, this just doesn't come up. It's one thing to know the word, it's another to see it. So you might have studied the word of begging, just it never comes up. So yeah, that's that's amazing from Joey. He plays HM very quickly. Yeah, HM, definitely the move to make here. Man, what what an impressive game for Joey so far. I mean, he's got the goods, but he is wielding them as dangerously as possible and just racking up a ton of points here. Let me get that score bug updated for y'all. Uh, Joey now oh ahead my gosh. to 119. But he hasn't drawn he's a draw foul. Wow. Wow. Well, at least this Ooh, means okay. that they're mixing the bag properly because we we know that Agnes on the last turn exchanged a bunch of vowels, so we know that they're drawing <laughs> somewhat random vowels, which is uh, which is a good thing. But uh, yeah, Joey, I have, have no idea. I have no idea what I would do in Agnes's shoes, and I I don't know. Depending on what Agnes does, I probably would have no idea what to do in Joey's shoes either. Um, yeah, wow. I, Agnes has to try to get this board open. There aren't awesome ways to do that. Uh, Arb plays above wordier ARB, holding LNOT, which is kind of meh, but it scores 28, opens up that DADO front hook. Um, there's also some cool longer plays using some of the different threes on the board. B Thorn plays through ETH, Tremblor plays through REM. And Bolt Rope plays down to OPE. Oh um, my god. What is going on in this game? game? Yeah, the degree These are of difficulty. Words you don't on see. Of those, yeah, just the degree of difficulty on any of those words is like a 10 out of 10. Any of those plays, that's really tough to spot. Um, Agnes plays Bora, and that opens up a really nice seven letter word lane, which is exactly what she needs to do with the deficit she's facing. So nice play from her. I agree with the idea for sure. And now Joey gets to show us who he is as a player. Vowed through OWE is clearly the equity play, but you're already ahead by 100. Do you play equity? You've got the blank, so maybe you do want to open this board, but you've got the lead, and generally you want to close when you've got a lead. Conundrum for sure. M-O-W-E-D, another option that's far more defensive but if you're looking to bingo, holding VC together might not be the smartest thing to do. Josh, analyze this position, vowed or mode. I think vowed is fine. Um, yeah, be, be really aggressive here. You're hitting the T if you draw one or two vowels. Um, it's early in the tournament, so there's something to be said about trying to win by a lot rather than a little, uh, even if it sacrifices a little bit of chances that you're going to win. Uh, would play a vowed might because he might have drawn two more consonants. Agnes might have bingoed, made it close. Um, but I think the aggression is warranted here at the beginning of the tournament. You really want to build up your your uh, point differential, uh, your spread. You really want to uh, try and win by as much as possible if you're in a really good position. 
So I like this idea by Joey. And we see Fount being played. Um, yeah, this play is reasonable. Uh, what is she leaving? N, is it N, E, N, L? N, E, right? L, N. Uh, we, need, we need that. L, N? Okay. We need, we need that. Just L, N. Here. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. But yeah, I guess oh, yeah, really, got really bad down. position. She's gonna need some help here with this draw. Um, I did want to mention something that people were talking about in the uh, in the chat when Agnes challenged a begging. Uh, Joey had already drawn and mixed his tiles, so if a begging wasn't a word, we would have had some issue. If Joey said, no, you didn't hold, we would have had some issue because you're not supposed to mix your tiles uh, if you are on hold. So perhaps Joey didn't hear Agnes uh, saying hold. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because the word was valid. So there's no there's no penalty. Um, but yeah, people did notice that. Uh, if, if Joey mixed, technically, I think the challenge shouldn't have been allowed. But alas, yes. uh, it happened. It was done. And Joey has just one bingo on this rack. And it's one that might be a little bit harder to pull the trigger on. Um, the six letter sacrum is there and it takes a back S. To me, I, I think maybe the Latin, uh, it, it might be sacra, sacrums or both. And it is both as the plural, but sacrums, the only playable bingo for Joey here, scoring 74 points. Suma uh, yeah, that's, also plays that's the only um, thing, wow. Yeah, uh, you would you would think there's something with the T or you know something higher scoring yeah, something G. more different. No, this just looks like you have at least three options. I would take a really long time here. I don't know if I would see Sacrums or see Joey. Of course, he sees it. Um, yeah, so fast, so yeah. strong on the words. But yeah, I would be looking through that T and I would be coming up empty. But I'm really surprised there's no eight letter word there, even something from the G, even a nine letter word from the D-O. Um, because yeah, the placement of Sacrums, although it does um, score pretty well, it does open the board a little bit. You see, there's a lot of space open on the bottom right, uh, but it's not very accessible right now. So positionally, uh, Joey would much rather not do that. Um, and it's possible you wanna play Sumac in a Vowed here. Uh, just to leave everything as is on this board, but I think I think, yeah, probably the optimal decision would be to play the only bingo of sacrums. Yeah, crazy stuff. Yeah, I mean, at at this point, Joey can do nearly anything. He's got the final blank. He's got a hundred point lead, and he's going to score either thirty seven or seventy four this turn. Like this one's done, more or less. Thanks for showing up, Agnes. I like this, and Joey's going to get both blanks early. Uh, this is what happens. He's too good opportunities but agnes does have a bingo here uh oh no she has two n's not two l's i thought she had linteld through the t um she does not i think i've phonied with uh limited before actually l-i-n-n-e-t-e-d so uh hopefully agnes doesn't fall for the same <laughs> for the same hopefulness uh but yeah that Sacrums. one made me throw up in the mouth a little bit limited Ooh. Okay. It looks looks horrible, yeah. right? But who knows? And yeah, I, I can just probably play it. it. Oh wow. Okay, that was looking really good for Joey, but he, he's uh, he's drawn two vowels as his uh, final two letters. Um, doesn't look like he's going to be able to play like deionize or anything, unless oh, unless Agnes plays dime. Oh no. What if Agnes plays dime uh, through the M? Yeah, I I think. I don't know, D-Lime also makes some sense, but Dime is a pretty easy play to pull the trigger on. L-I-M-N also plays um, through the M, though that's tough to spot. I don't know, if I'm if I'm Agnes in this situation, it's round one, I probably decide, forget it, I'm playing for spread. But if I were later in a tournament, I really needed a win, I've got to do some kind of play down to the N in Fount and create another big spot, you know, like... I might even play L-I-N-E-N to the N for 12 just to give myself any way back in. But at this stage in the tournament, you probably just kind of concede that you're going to lose this one and make a more equity play like Dime or D-Lime, right, Josh? Yeah. Um, 
I'm a little bit worried though, because she has D E I lined up. And a very common four-letter word, uh, phony, is D-E-M-I. Uh, like Demi Lovato, Demi Moore. Demi also means half in French, so the Canadian side of things uh, might be might be leading Agnes astray here. But it looks like she's going to play Dime, I think. So uh, what would oh, have been no. really interesting is if she plays... If she plays... If she played Demi, would Joey accept? Because it gives him a bingo. Um, but yeah, this is, this is really bad regardless. And, uh, Joey's going to have over. Yeah. Joey's going to do this in four seconds, four seconds. As soon as he gets his paperwork done, he's going to grab the E here it comes. Waste no time. Wow. What a miracle. Is it Christmas in Canada right now? Is that what Joey's <laughs> feeling? Cause, uh, there's one way he gets bailed out of this rack. And of course, when it rains, it pours on Agnes, man, look at that draw too. Oh, I feel for her. I feel for her. Yeah, this is this is horrendous. Um, just like so brutal that all of these crazy, difficult words came up. Um, where yeah, it really like this this sort of game. The positions we got into very early definitely favors heavily the well the more well studied and uh, and experienced players. Uh, on the circuit so yeah very unfortunate stuff for agnes uh who can like i said take anyone down uh, on a good on a good day with with regular positions not positions where you have to play begging and then a begging comes up like that's that's crazy yeah i mean degree of difficulty on this game a 10 out of 10 for agnes some scrabble games are easy you know i have games at club i play in four minutes i'm like i didn't have to think about any of these plays they were all just obvious equity one one option stands out and then there are games like this for agnes where it's like what on earth even happened these are the humbling games and uh geez agnes has uh been humbled a little bit by the great joey malik speaking of uh the great joey malik and the other great players in this field for those of you watching us on facebook or on twitch right now uh, the remainder of the nightcap for day one is going to be streamed exclusively on the Let's Play Scrabble YouTube channel. So if you're watching us elsewhere, uh, get ready to jump on over to YouTube to watch games two and three. We're already live on YouTube now. You could jump over right now. And uh, I got to give the plug as well. If you uh, like this video, then it bumps Scrabble up the algorithm and brings a couple more folks to the stream. So Josh, the person who, bought, who runs Let's Play Scrabble, always appreciates that. Anybody who likes to see Scrabble grow appreciates that. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, well, go ahead and do that, because we're going to have not just this tournament, but many, many more. The biggest one in two months, uh, the Montreal Scrabble Tournament. That's going to be a great one. So um, if you're watching us on Facebook or on Twitch, Jump on over to YouTube now or make a plan to jump over after this game. If you're already watching us on YouTube, say hey in the chat. We got plenty more of this and uh, maybe give us some love. Give us a like. Yeah, that's uh, that's <laughs> man. I'm so excited for the Montreal tournament. It's it's uh, it's coming up in May. We're going to plug it a ton. But right now, yeah, um, Agnes is going to have to figure out what to do with this horrendous rack. She should not feel bad about this game. Um, if I were at the, the tournament, I would definitely, I would definitely let her know that the, that what happened in this game was <laughs> absurd and ridiculous. Sometimes um, it's sometimes dumb. really difficult. Hey, Josh, Josh. Yeah. What about ERN from the E and D ionized for three? Yeah, there are no E's. Look at the pool. No, no it's the last No E's, no S's, yeah. let's go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan uh, of that. Uh, yeah, it's a, ERN for three, uh, and then draw that Q and play QATS for nine. I actually think this is like one good thing. I think this is a great play. Maybe Lorne through the O instead to keep uh, to not keep duplicate R's, uh, same score. But uh, you're hitting you're hitting that T a lot. So basically, you're you're telling Joey like, do you want to block this T? Are you worried about me being going to this T? And he might sacrifice a lot of points to do that. But knowing Joey, I think he's okay leaving it open, uh, unless he has a very clear play that blocks it, uh, especially with the avowed hook still still in play. So he plays Tav, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I mean, his rack wasn't good either, so 
Uh, but yeah, now we see the cue being drawn from uh, from Agnes. And that is, uh, yeah, that is insult to injury. What can I say? Yeah, in uh, insult way you can put it this game and i mean looking at the pool from agnes's perspective nothing else bad can possibly happen look how horrific that is and yet like the way this game is going gone like there's going to be something absolutely stupid that joey ends up drawing right is there even a possible <laughs> bingo down to <laughs> i mean the unseen tiles are so so bad but yeah i wouldn't be surprised um but, i mean it's enough it's enough this is this is enough. Joey's ahead 200 points. Um, there might be some cool way to like set up the Z here. I might just play out. Huh. I might just play out O N and U T, even though that sets up an A hook. I'm not really sure. There's probably a really cool play here for Joey, but it's hard to like try and make really cool plays when you're up 200 points. Like sort of the empathy tends to kick in, right? You just want to just get it over with for your your and your opponent's sake but it's a tournament oh, you have to I, do your best you have I to try and uh, T T U I and i t above t a v look at that unseen pool set up your z like she doesn't have a w if she's just fished right maybe yeah t u i and i t <laughs> that's a great idea uh, she'll play at two e and then i'll play z next turn yeah, that's that's amazing. Um, yeah, that's exactly the sort of play you, you want to look for in these positions, no matter what the score is. Uh, just yeah, just find a really really cool way to try and set up your Z. And like, even if it gets blocked, you're setting yourself up potentially on the uh, left side with the double letter score and the double word score. So um, yeah, that's certainly the best play that that uh, that's been mentioned so far here. Um, yeah, uh, there's again. another sick one. Uh, through TAV, you can play Ottawa. Uh, shout out to Ottawa. Do some Canadian, I guess. Hey. I don't know, but making a far one. Did you say Z? Did I say Z? Who said uh, Z? I did, didn't I? Well, I just said it. All right. Thanks, Robin, for reminding us. Very bad. We've been very bad. Yeah, you gotta we'll keep me work honest. on the kinks. <laughs> So two T very so gonna, very sensible play, yeah. Just just block the T, make sure nothing bad happens, and coast to your two hundred point victory. Crush your spirits after you've already done everything else you've done this game. I think that's right. That's what that's what you do probably, or not. I don't know. And nothing matters when the score is like this. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Gets the X too. That's just. Uh... Yeah, I don't even know. What do you do here? There's 11 tiles in the bag. Probably just Euro from the E and D I and I's. I don't know. Like, maybe you play route to the T, try to triple, triple. Eruv to the V is nice. E-R-U-V. That's probably the best play. I seeing. am looking at that unseen pool. I see W-X-Z and a bunch of garbage. Um, I've got to make sure you don't have a big Z or X play at this point. I don't see one on the board, but if I did see one, oh, there's X, I, and X, U. Yeah. I would just block that to be that guy. I'd play O, U, R <laughs> to the R in back room for three. You can't have this on top of everything else. You would do that, and then you would draw the X. And look at this very nice play that Agnes is putting on the board Ooh. and taking back. But it's a very nice play anyway. Uh, there is an L right out that can that can hurt her with Lout, but um, it's still a very cool idea. She's still fighting, but yeah, she takes it back. She doesn't want she doesn't want to open up a huge spot for like I don't know lax or something. But yeah, this doesn't really matter what you do here. She could try something. It's probably not going to work. The unseen letters are too bad. There's nowhere to go. I've got to give a kudos to Agnes. If this happened to me, game one of a tournament, I'd be in full tears. Um, so kudos to her for keeping it together. I think she's going to play Aruv. Yeah, good job. Get points. Whatever. She knocked down the rack again, though. We're going to have to. We're going to have to work on that in between games. Yeah. Have you ever Have you ever sat down for for a streamed game? Sometimes the rack cam gets a little bit in the way. We apologize for. Uh, 
but yeah, it's difficult to uh, to nub into the rack cam. Okay, now it's a little right, bit high. Well, we see we Joey's, Joey's shirt. <laughs> Oh, she drew so she draws. Rockies, but she's not. There's no space on the board. Oh, is that an I or is that the? Yeah, that is an I. Damn. Um, yeah, Uralis. That's a fun little word. Um, Joey is hiding his rack, but we know he has A A A N O X Z, and yes. um, yeah. he might just drop the X. I wonder. He's alphabetizing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there might be a bingo here, Matt. Yeah, you should alphabetize your letters. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, I mean, I guess you got to make Woo Rallies on the top go away. It's possible. I don't see any other possible bingos for Agnes, but... Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, at least you I might want to play like some that, defense. But, Oh, Wu Rari's Wu Rari's also plays W O O R A R I S. So block both of those. You got to play racks first, I think, or something similar to that. I'd like to hold the uh, the X for the bottom spot, but I don't think you can. Yeah, something like Azan to the N might be interesting um, for twenty six. Which oh, that doesn't block the the one of the placements of Wu Rari's. Never mind. Yeah, it doesn't so, yeah. block Wu Rari's. So. Yeah, sometimes when you have this ZX combination, you can make such flashy plays. I think, yeah, Joey's thinking about blocking. Oh, he's thinking about, is he thinking about Zona and At? That would be really cool. Um, that would set Agnes up for, for an underlap if she has the last A, which is quite likely. Um, but it does seemingly handle the bingo threats, Sona and AT to the T and Tav. So perhaps- Yeah, I think he's, you can't, you can't quite plan around an out in two, you know, you're gonna be drawing one more tile and with the rack as unbalanced as this one, you can't really expect to hit much out in two wise. Um, but you've got to obstruct the R. I think that's priority one for Joey here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he doesn't know that, um, Agnes doesn't have it. There's a, what, a two and two and eight chance that she has a bingo. So, yeah. Okay. So he's playing Zona. He's being a little bit more uh, conservative, makes perfect sense. And he draws the A out of the bag. So Surprise, um, there's another one. Yeah. So who are we, uh, who are we going to watch after this? You know, we already picked out the matchup and I forgot who we did. It's been a fat minute. So uh, we'll see. We'll see who, uh, who we picked in just a minute. Josh is going to help us out. Oh, next is going to be Max Panich versus up-and-comer Hank Hees, who has gained rating at every tournament he's played. Those people are always so scary because you know they're criminally underrated. Yeah, yeah, Hank Hees. Um, definitely, definitely an interesting, um, an interesting, he's the bottom seed, but I think he's probably going to play way above his rating. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll uh, see when that happens. There's also something else that uh, we should mention to you guys. Uh, Matt, do you, do you want to talk about that? There's something something cool happening in Belleville. Neither of us are there. But, um, yeah, there's a documentary crew. In town. Yeah, so uh, there is a documentary crew covering this tournament in addition to the stream that y'all are watching. And uh, who knows where that's going to go, but that is going to be cool. Players being interviewed between rounds. Um, stay tuned for some Scrabble content out there. Um, it is very exciting. And hopefully we can have a player maybe come on and chat about it in between during the intermission. Um, I do want to point out, while Agnes is on stream, uh, she found the optimal endgame of Zoril holding OSW, which is going to go out at the bottom for 23. She found it very quickly, so even when life has given her the short end of the stick, she is playing well, playing, making solid plays, and she's going to catch Joey with AAA after her optimal endgame. It's going to make the final on this one 310 to 501 in favor of the uh, Joey Malik from Maine. Sorry, Agnes, <laughs> you gave it your best shot, but uh, a begging and a bunch of weird stuff happened this game and uh, Joey has thrown down 500 points in a clinic. 
We do not have the overhead mic, at least not tonight. Maybe, maybe not. We'll have it set up down the road. So we can't mortem of what's going on right now. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, for those just joining us, while we are streaming round one on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, we are streaming rounds two and three tonight exclusively on YouTube on the Let's Play Scrabble channel. So if you are watching Scrabble right now on YouTube or on Twitch, jump on over, or I'm sorry, on Facebook or on Twitch, jump on over to YouTube, Let's Play Scrabble on YouTube, streaming live from there. Um, come join us, and we will have two more NWL games tonight, plus the remainder of this 15-game tournament on Saturday and Sunday morning. Uh, with that, I'm hearing from production team, we are about to cut the streams on Facebook and on Twitch. So one more time, hop on over to YouTube. The channel is Let's Play Scrabble, and we will see everybody there. We'll get the chat going. And uh, yeah, so two more games of Scrabble. First, Max Panich versus Hank Hees coming up in just a moment. Uh, we'll let, uh, I'll see what the production team wants to do. I don't know that we're going to take a break. We may just cut straight to uh, some banter, get a little interview with uh, Josh Sokol or one of these players. I'll see what Josh has planned for us. But uh, yeah, plenty more Scrabble to come. And again, if you missed the beginning, Matt Kanick joined by the Penn North American champion. Josh, how'd you feel about that first one? That was a crazy game. I feel really bad for Agnes. Like you said, she had the short end of the stick, but very, very instructional game. I think there's a lot to learn from it. And uh, some, some crazy stuff happened. I hope more games like that. Curve. Even though it was one-sided, there's so much interesting stuff going on. So that's what we love. Yes. Sometimes Scrabble's boring, and then sometimes you have a game like that, and it's like every single position in the first eight turns, you're like, wow, I can learn some really important lessons from this. I may never see a situation like this again, or at least not for a year or two. Like, there's some really weird stuff going on in the coolest way. So we like those games. I love those games. I love games where anything strange happens. I hope we get some strange Canadian scrabble at the Canadian scrabble classic. Yeah. All right. Uh, we said the uh, next game we're coming is Max Panish and Hank Hees. Um, and yeah, what's interesting about this matchup, for one thing, is it's it's definitely. Um, it's definitely an underdog versus overdog scenario. Uh, it's definitely a mismatch. But Hank Hees has never lost rating in a tournament. And he's he's started playing, I think, right after the pandemic. And he's just been making his way up the rankings. Um, I know that he is receiving some very, very high-level coaching from none other than Grandmaster Mac Meller. Um, so that's probably explaining he's been being coached for, I don't know, some, some time now that probably explains, uh, his rise. Um, this is his first division one event and yeah, but he's playing none other than Max Panich, who to me is just such a scary player. He's so soft-spoken and, and kind, but he has this like soft-spoken intimidation to him where he just very unpredictable, very, very strong. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I have a hard time beating Max, so we'll see, we'll see how Hank approaches the game. Uh, but yeah, very, a very interesting mashup, uh, for round two. And yeah, I hope you guys have all clicked the link and joined the, uh, one and only Let's Play Scrabble.com YouTube live chat. I see a lot of you in here. I see a couple people that I might normally see on my live streams. So it's great to have all of you here. It's great to be here with Matt. Um, and yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait for the start of this uh, this game too. Yeah, if you haven't heard of Hank Hees yet, just look at his cross tables page and I think it tells you everything you need to know about him. Only 14 tournaments played, but his most recent tournament was the national championship where he finished second in division three and gained nearly 200 rating points. I see he's had scores starting with five, like seven different times, almost always had a score starting with the four. That's a sign that someone doesn't belong in that division anymore. 
Um, so welcome to the big leagues. This will be Hangers Big Division One tournament, and uh, first time on stream almost certainly. This will be exciting. Uh, definitely some jitters for him, but hey, trial by fire, right? That's how you learn in Scrabble. Everybody's been there. Yeah, you remember those days, Matt, where where we were we were criminally underrated in in the lower divisions, and everyone was just so upset that we were still still playing in those in those bottom divisions. Like, where you don't belong here. It's like, well, you gotta wait, you gotta wait. I need to I need to get my rating up. That's like the biggest flex I'll make all weekend, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, definitely, I've definitely been where Hank is, um, and I'm really excited to see his rise as a player. Uh, but yeah, he's going to have to get through some toughies, 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 toughies. And starting with Max Panich, who, what, um, somebody said that he's running, he's helping run a school Scrabble tournament in Toronto. Um, I think I saw in the chat, which is really awesome. Um, so there's a school Scrabble tournament on Tuesday in Toronto. So Max is going to not no no rest for the wicked he's he's going back to toronto after this tournament and uh running a tournament running a school tournament that's really awesome yeah yeah uh, you gotta give a shout out to anybody who contributes back to scrabble whether that's organizing tournaments for adults or for kids organizing a club for adults or for kids um it takes a whole village to put scrabble together and uh, I mean, as a school Scrabble kid myself from 20 years ago now, um, thanks to Max, thanks to anybody who uh, gets young folks interested in this game, because that's where a lot of the talent and a lot of the enthusiasm has come from. So way to go, Max. That's awesome. Keep doing cool stuff for Scrabble. The stuff that do these things and don't even talk about it, like those are the unsung heroes of the game. People put in so, so many volunteer hours to do things for scrabble just for the love of the game and yeah it's people like max that keep the ships afloat or the one ship i guess there's only one ship uh the scrabble ship and uh yeah can't thank people can't thank people like max enough honestly um i think school scrabble is by far the most successful thing that we've done in the community to get uh to get new people into the game uh, since since we had uh, Word Freak, uh, the book uh, Stefan Fastest's book in, in the early two thousands come out, but since then I think School Scrabble has just been uh, fantastic. You you catch the kids early, you trap them, and yeah, they uh, they start playing Scrabble, you know, on uh, of their own volition. <laughs> Scrabble is one of those games, and everybody watching this stream probably knows it. And if you don't know it, you will learn it quickly. It's a game that takes years upon years upon years to master. Nobody just appears and is like immediately an expert. I think Annette is probably the closest thing we've had to that in the last few years, where she, within two years, is nearly winning Division One majors. Um, but it, you know, you'll see most of these players have been playing tournaments for 10, 15, 20 years. And hey, if you can start when you're 12 or 13, that's going to help. That's going to help build up that wealth of experience you need to be a Division One player. So, you know, we've got so many school Scrabble kids or other people who started young. At the same time, there's a lot of folks out there who start a lot older who routinely kick my butt over the board. So um, it just takes a lot of passion, a lot of time. And kids and teenagers tend to have a lot more of that than adults. Although sometimes people retire or something and then just tear it up or have a little baby at home and when they're at home taking care of the baby they just also got a card box going and all of a sudden <laughs> you got you know 200 rating points um you know there's a it takes a lot of passion people find it at different points but getting to start young is always going to be a leg up i think wait a second <sighs> i just got word from our producer that this is a repeat matchup for those that are unaware um there was an early bird tournament earlier today. So I think it was five games um, that the players played before the main event. And Hank and Max had already played. And Hank won the game 542 to 361. Are you kidding me? This guy is Bro. 500 points lower rated. <laughs> Not for long. That's all I can say about that. Goodness. That's incredible, Hank. Wow. So Max we had no idea. 
that's amazing. wow who is this guy like i want to meet him and shake his hand this is the greenest cross tables page i've seen in a while <laughs> and it sounds like that early bird if you beat the expert then your rating is going to go up one more time hasn't updated on cross tables yet but make that 15 straight tournaments probably of green yeah and bottom seed in division one you're gonna to have to have a terrible performance to not make that 16 here. Wow, Hank Hees, everyone. We'll get to meet him in just yeah. a minute. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, I know. I've seen Hank. He's he's a tall, tall gentleman. Um, we love we love our tall players, right, Matt? Um, and uh, six, yeah, three, apparently the he's one here. <laughs> apparently he's uh, he's retired as well. So, like you said, he has he has some time to devote to the game. Um, there's yeah i don't know what to say that's that's amazing um all right that's enough build up let's cut over to the board the players are situated and ready the man the myth the legend hank he's looks like round one did not go well for him but hey if he can just do to max what he did a few hours ago he'll be back in the green on his spread yeah yeah <laughs> That's amazing. And Max, yeah, he won his game by, by 43 points. Okay, so there was a close one. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. The psychological aspect of having already lost to someone earlier in the day, I wonder if that's going to affect Max, who's going first. Um, so yeah, stay tuned. Let's see. I think the players are ready. They're going to shake hands or not. Uh, it's not compulsory in Scrabble. I don't know. There's a debate about whether it should be. Um, or is there? What do you oh, think? Oh, let's get into some great Scrabble debates on the stream. That's the energy we need right now, yeah? <laughs> Did you shake hand? Okay, no, we're not going there. Chat's going to have a blast with this one. We're off to the races. Uh, Max, A-C-G-L-R-S-U. That's C -G -G combination. Yeah, God, please add guac to the lexicon in the next They topic. did. My they did. Did they? Didn't they? Did, oh, Guac is a word now, right? Is it really? This is this is the first there's a second tournament in North America that's using the updated NWL 2023 list. I think guac is one of the one of the new words. So I have to I have to check this. Don't you have the don't you have the quackle open? I, I thought I uploaded the new lexicon in my quackle, but it didn't pop up. Guac did just get yeah. added. I did not know that. Wow. Okay. Well, we might see our first new word on stream if max knows it but clearly i did not wow what did i do wrong with my quackle why are, why are the words not here i don't like this uh oh i i might have to i might have to to jump into quackle to do might i mean there aren't that many new words but they might come up uh man so it looks like max hasn't at least hasn't spotted guac mm -hmm. it might not be the best play um but okay he's playing curl so i actually prefer guac oh. to curl but gular he had lined up looked pretty good as well um but yeah i would play something like gull or lug here probably acrs very very nice leave um but yeah okay interesting play defensive play setting up his s and he's just drawn oh wow, wow. are you okay. allowed to play spangle at the canadian tournament yes or no yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. We, have, we have we have one spangle, right? One one leaf that is spangled on our on our flag. Is that how that works? You have a leaf spangled flag instead, I suppose. Anyway, uh, apparently I did have guac and I did have the new lexicon, and I just assumed it would be at the top of the list, and instead it was no. like eight plays down. So crisis averted on my quackle, I suppose at least. Uh, but yeah, guac could have been played, curl instead played, and holding the G is something that you try not to do in Scrabble, but when you're going to draw a blank into it, fine, you can keep whatever you want. Max going to bingo next turn as Hank faces a tough rack here on his first streamed move. W-A-L-I-E through the L in curl, while just W-I-L-E through the same L, maybe earwig through the R if you want to go nuts mileage through the l is the highest scoring option but that holds i w what a yucky rack just awkward and clunky for hank what do you think in here josh yeah i think um wally is what he's about to play that's uh very interesting because he's setting up an e um and i'm wondering if 
you the players are are aware of WALIE because yeah now I guess Max could play Spangle and Whaley. Um but it's it's a relatively new word. That one was added I think in 2014 18. 2018. I think 18. Okay. W A L I E. Yeah. So it's pretty new. It's the previous update. Um and yeah, sometimes I don't know. Sometimes those those words don't stick. So um And yet he doesn't need it. He's got 80 oh. points. This is Man, Max, this is awesome. Scrabble. Waste no time up along. Blank is an O. 80 okay. points. He doesn't need that back hook on Wally. He's going to score 80 here. Awesome. Awesome stuff wow. for Max. Yeah, I certainly didn't see that. Okay, that's yeah, that's an amazing find. Amazing recognition. Like just the word, the the formulation of that word is so bizarre. I mean, you have the NGS, but man, that is a extremely high level find by Max, and he found it so quickly. Nice job. And uh, that N is going to give Hank an option that will bail him out of this rack. He's found it almost instantly imaging the play here, and uh, it, it, you've got to do it. He started to play it, picked it up. Maybe he's looking, just doing his diligence. I'm not missing a double-double through the L, right? There's no stupid bingo in this rack, but no, imaging is the best he can do here. Does give up some potential huge counters on top, but out of a terrible rack like this, you got to do it. Unfortunately, I think he's about to get jibed in return. Yeah, 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 yeah. jibe. Jibe, uh, B I N E M. That's, uh, that's going to be huge for Max. Uh, hopefully, four. yeah, hopefully we see a nice, uh, a nice draw for Hank here uh, so he can stay in the game after that. Um, yeah, very unfortunate start as well. Like um, the play of Wally might not be the best play, but it's pretty close to it. Um, so yeah, the fact that, uh, Hank's going to be down a hundred points after this play. Oh, but look what he draws. He draws the QU. That's, uh, oh. that's pretty good. But the question is if Jibe comes down, what is Hank going to do? I don't think you can play Jehu and get rid of your U. Uh, um, no, I, I think it's just so check weird. And w check and W E, no right? Matter. Yeah. That's going to be crazy. Just open this board, get things as dynamic as you want. You're going to create big overlaps next to the Q. If you play check and WE, you're going to open the triple-triple. The J is going to stay exposed. There's going to be a lot of points scored if jibe to check is the next two turns. And I don't really see why it'd be anything else. Max flexing his word knowledge, the really cool six-letter J-O-B-B-I-E. I think he set that up on his rack earlier. Uh, it's fun to play those big words. But unfortunately, Scrabble's not about who makes the biggest words. It's about who scores the most points. And you've got to forego playing the cool word, even though you'll probably never draw Jobby again in the next five years. you got to play Jive here. You know, it's, you know what uh, Hank is super close to here? Curly cues. You know that word from curl? No. Uh, it's a verb, actually. Curly cues, curly cued. C-U-R-L-I-C-U-E. Um, I don't think we're going to see that though, since he's going to play the second C most likely. Um, but man, that'd be pretty cool. He might actually play qua to the A and up alongs because yeah, Hank was looking at playing QUA already, uh, which Jive blocked. He was going to play it with QI, UM, and AA atop of imaging. And now mm -hmm. he might still have that play in his head and you might see the CH combination and think it's pretty strong. That's a very reasonable option as well. Qua for 32 uh, to the A and up alongs. And we might oh. see Qua, we might see Quag uh, down to the G in imaging, kind of a similar idea. Um, both of those are going to hold the powerful CH combination, but I think check just what it does to the board is exactly what Hank needs in this situation. Uh, after Max has just netted those 54 points for Jibe, 146 for Max Panic, 43 for Hank. And uh, it looks like Quag is going to come down. He wants to keep the CH together, which is reasonable. He could hit a massive bingo to or from that S on the bottom of this board, assuming the J doesn't get blocked. But I think the J gets blocked a lot of the time here, or the J gets played from, yeah. I should say. Exactly, yeah. 
I mean, it doesn't look like Max has a great play using the J. He has join. Um, so we might actually see... I think he's probably going to play join if he sees it. Um, it's not doesn't keep the best tiles, but BM BM together are pretty good. Um, and I don't really see any alternatives here that are great. But I would definitely spend a little bit of time looking for like some high scoring long word maybe from the G. He almost has like Gamboon or something, uh, some, something like that. But I think yeah, join looks pretty good. Uh, the coolest play here, and also the best equity play, is awesome. It's through the R in curl. It's Bromo, B-R-O-M-O, making Ba, Poi, A-M, and L-O. That is 32 and holds the bingo oh prone on I-N-R. But I think if I max, I love holding stuff like B-M-O-R when I'm ahead by 100. Because, yeah, maybe you'll bingo but I'm going to score 30 or 40. And if I can just score 30 or 40 every turn for the rest of this game, I'm, I'm probably still going to win. So join to me makes a good amount of sense as a play. And I want to do what I can to muck up that S on the bottom. I don't know that one wants to go so far as to play like booms to the S in up alongs. That seems kind of paranoid, but try to obstruct it a little bit. And what's he got here? Oh, bro. Oh, he's playing bro. He's thinking, so you know what's crazy? And someone mentioned this in the chat. If Quag hadn't been played, Max had brooming to the G, underlapping oh. all the way. And I think he spotted that, uh, that Quag blocked that somehow. And maybe, oh. like I said, like he just has it in his mind. And he wants to play brood, which is a very good play, by the way. Um, it does the same thing that Join does pretty much it blocks the oh S very well and scores goodness. well but that's crazy you guys see the in could just go under gi and in that is so, <laughs> that is so insane. Check, check to brooming to like a hank triple triple would have been like peak scrabble content we're done <laughs> like nothing cooler, nothing cooler is happening this weekend Oh man, yeah. what could have been? Like, Max must have seen it too. He's got to be a little upset right now, but man, he's so stoic as a player. Yeah, definitely. I've barely seen him out. show like show huge emotion. Um, yeah, yeah, he's he's got he's got the uh, he's got the demeanor for the game for sure. So someone mentioned Chevet making W E and A T on the vertically on the top right. That that looks like a decent play to me for Hank. Um, but yeah, what's interesting about the play of Broom, Matt, is that now like Jube and, and Juba and Jive, they still fit through the J and the B. So someone's just going to get an easy bailout, and it might just be Max next turn. I mean, again, when you've got the lead, all you want to do is score 35 a turn. And so if you can create an opportunity to just play Jive when you do draw into those valley racks, like that seems like the thing you want to do. And any turn Hank is not opening the board is another turn I can continue closing the board. So if he goes and plays over there, I don't really care because I just uh, I just muck up the rest of the board. So Chevet, kind of a word knowledge check, and it looks like Hank maybe hasn't seen that one yet or hasn't spotted it. Instead, E-C-H-E going to be the play that comes down here. Holding onto that V is not ideal, but... It's 23 points, and you've got to continue scoring and trying to get a bingo and trying to open the board. And where that C is slotted, this is a nice little board forking play. Now you can make plays back hooking WE, front hooking or playing through ECHE, and they can't be overlapped. Uh, you can't block both at the same time if you're max. So cool idea from Hank. If you're going to open the board, though, you need to draw better than he just did, unfortunately. Yeah, despite the miss of Chevet, that play of etch is a very very strong strategic acumen from hank uh like you said forking the board the c makes it impossible to deal with uh both on top of the e or through the e and uh going down next to the we so that's a very nice play and the vet combo isn't so bad here uh hank could have drawn into something like out love or outlive through the u and the l um quag and who belongs makes that double double lane uh, so very good board uh, play for the board. Definitely, we would have liked to see a higher score with Chevet, but uh, we we get we get to see that Hank knows what he's doing. I mean, that, you can't teach somebody how to play a board game. You can teach somebody the words by saying, "Here's Quackle, here's Aerolith, here's you know whatever word study," 
and just give them hours of time. I think any any fool can sit down and spend enough time learning a lot of the words. Not any fool. They're hard. But learning game strategy is just something you kind of have or you don't. We see so many players come over from poker or chess because they just know how to play games. And Hank already showing us he knows how to do that. Man, I am excited to see where Hank goes in the Scrabble scene over the next few years. Yeah, I totally agree. Now, I mean, we see Jibe come down from Max uh, as expected, just an easy 39 points. And we also see now Hank is struggling with his V. He doesn't really have anything great that I see. And a lot of the plays that he could make, like Veto or Covet or s- stuff like that, is uh, is not ideal. But he's, oh, wow. So he's playing Elevon to further fork the board. Look at this, Matt. This is like, obviously, keeping TT is really bad. Uh, but this play just demonstrates that he he really understands the board dynamic. And he's just creating, yeah, this is awesome. creating play when he's behind over 100 points. He knows that he's a huge underdog at this point to win. So he's just he's just doing what he can to breathe some air into the board, which the play of Curl definitely constricted. As you can see, the top left of the board, no action in that so far. And that's exactly why a play like Curl is so good. Just really prevents stuff from happening up there. So, yeah. We see four T's now, but it doesn't matter. What a great, what a great showing by Hank. Like I, I really, yeah, I, I love the idea. Place. I love the idea to keep the board open. It's what you've got to do. No fear. Some players shut down against a higher rated player like Max, and they're like, I, "I'm too scared to open." You may be up eighty, but I'm not opening. And those are the easiest games in the world for the expert to win because you're like, "All right." Me neither, game over. Hank doing what he needs to do. The only issue is holding TT. You want to look at how many more are left, and there were four more left, not a single played T. So, you know, nobody deserves this to happen to them, but, eh, you know, like, okay, that that was certainly in the realm of possibilities with four unseen Ts, and uh, so now he's got a bunch more. Look at this. So the play of Onion-E was played by Max. This was a gut check moment. He could have played non airy through the same N for a lot more, but that would open a triple-triple through the N on the top right. So I do like this decision by by uh, Max, although he might have wanted to be a little aggressive here, try to win by as much as possible, uh, given his, his small win in the last round, once again for uh, for spread purposes, to try and build up his, his point differential, which is the number one tiebreaker. Uh, but yeah, the play of Onion-E makes a lot of sense. It probably wins more often than Nonary does. And you know what I see here? I'm sure you see it on Quackle too. The weird six-letter word that Hank can play here, right? <laughs> oh, I know this word all too well. The six is attent, A-T-T-E-N-T. And I opened a game at club about a month ago with A-T-T-E-N-T blank. And I played no. attent. The blank S. And no. That is not a word. <laughs> uh, you can't you can't have an S on it. It's just a six attempt. It's an adjective meaning paying attention, I suppose. But anyway, attempt is a six. Don't put an S on it and lose a turn like I did. Uh, anyway, ATT the play from Hank, trying to keep himself a little bit more in range and keep a bingo line. Uh, if you draw a bingo starting with the vowel from the T, uh, you know you can play it next to ATT. So. Uh, he needs to draw a bingo quickly, and it looks like he's not getting any closer to doing that. Max actually likely to beat him there now. Oof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is this is bad. Um, probably close to over here, but there's still some life. There's still a, a blank unseen uh, to both players, and yeah, Hank's going to be able to to deal with his his letters and score something next turn. The question is, what does Max do in this position? He's up a hundred points. So, I mean, he's obviously in great shape no matter what. But it'd be interesting to see what he chooses to do. If he chooses to try and play very defensively, try and block all of those vertical lanes on the right side, um, thinking next to the I and Wally, next to the W, E, uh, R, Y, A is a word, uh, is also the lane um, on the bottom right next to the T and at. So he can do a lot here if he makes a very large point sacrifice and uh, 
tries to block a few things. But I think the biggest threat right now is from the S and up alongs. So he might just choose to, to build further, uh, to build his rack further and not worry too much. Uh, but there's a really nice play. I think you're about to mention it, right? R-H-E-A um, in that same spot as earlier through the R and curl. Yeah, R-H-E-A or the double-double Hurleys for 40 also available, but that holds A-A. Don't know that you want to get caught up in Val trouble with the lead, although 40 points is a lot to pass up. It's a tough to spot, disconnected double-double. A-H makes a ton of sense here, but if you've okay, ever watched me watch a stream, you've heard me say before, uh, fishing with a lead is always scary because one way you lose is if you miss your fish for three turns and have to score 12 for three turns and your opponent catches up. Max is not going to miss. He's drawn in fares in two spots. And this one's going to be all but done. Hank playing wedded, trying to go digging in the bag for something better than what he's drawn this game. But he's going to get bingoed back on, and uh, I think this one's all but done. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, Mac, Mac, uh, Mac, <laughs> Hank has played a, a really great game. Um, yeah, I can really see, you can really see where Scrabble coaching gets you guys. Um, but yeah, I don't like the play of AH from Max. Uh, like, like you said, if he keeps drawing like one point vowels and stuff, he might get into trouble. He won't be able to score much. Uh, but what he does do with the play of AH is he draws a lot of stuff like this. So, um, yeah, this is a very basic seven letter word in fairs. I'm surprised he hasn't aligned he's, no, his rack he's, yet. He's set set up. Up. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. I, I would not have seen this. <laughs> I would not have I would played in fairs instantly. That's awesome. I bingo ending in an F. Oh man. Wow. Okay. So 86 well, points for Mac. I am no longer surprised. I am, yeah, I am in awe. Like two amazing finds to the triple for Max this this game. I mean, what do you expect? He's, he's up there for a reason. Along and, and Serif, that's that's awesome. Wow, crazy. Wow, yeah. How often do you see a word ending in an F? I mean, I think that one's the most common. There's digestif, sportif, yeah, digestif, aperitif. Yeah. But yeah, man, there are so few and far in between. Crazy. I had somebody play um, um, Digestif on me recently, actually. Um, so, I mean, it's less crazy to me than it would be if that hadn't happened recently. This is amazing. I mean, come on, guys. Like, this is top level stuff. Amazing. Joey Malik and Max Panich are putting on clinics um, in terms of just like, this is how awesome, solid top experts play you know yeah yeah they're drawing well but they're still making some brilliant plays with the stuff anybody can find and play in fairs if they've touched a bingo list but you got to do even better if you find a good play make a better one and that's what they've been doing uh man this has been some high level stuff from our our one and two seeds now and joey and max sorry one and three seeds one and three yeah can't forget about uh, Michael Fagan, who's the number two seed. Um, yeah, man. I, I mean, it, again, like, I, I'd like to say this. It's not like we don't know, me and Matt don't know the word Sanserif. Like, if you're a pretty top-level player, you've seen the word probably and you know it. It's a question of seeing it when you have such a like, easy option. Just like last game, Joey had thrashed. Like, he saw that, and then he just found potentially even better play. So yeah, really, I mean, I'm going to say it, Matt, like that's what everyone says. When you find a good play, look for better. And yeah, this is why, this is why Max is a top player. Uh, just, just uh, the patience to find, to find Sanserif is, is, yeah, it's pretty amazing. So on that last turn, Hank had the opportunity to make a flashy play through the R in curl. He had K-R-O-N-A available, just a nice little sneaky fit there. But O-K-E is going to help him dodge a big X play, though he's still going to get hit with a big X play uh, beneath wetted, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, that spot, like for the third time in the game, just through the R in curl, some very tough finds there for uh, for both players. Um, but yeah, look at this nice rack for Max. So he's going to be able to score pretty well with that. I'm sure. 
He has Oryx lined up. Is uh, there somewhere? Where does that fit? I for 32 alongside Onyony and takes out just like basically every bingo line in that quadrant all at once. But it's only 32 when just plunking OX is 41. Or the cool ox eye making yoke, um, O-X-E-Y-E, um, plays for 41 as well, though it gives back easy, obvious stacks to Hank. Yeah, and I think in this position, if you're max, you know that you're probably going to win, um, but you want to, yeah, you want to try and make a play that that uh, that deals with the stuff you don't want, deals with threats on the board, and scores well. And I see with those three R's unseen, uh, it makes a lot of sense to want to play one of yours. Um, so yeah, I like, I like the idea of Oryx here. Yeah, when you're winning by 100 and you have good balanced racks with an X that can score 40, um, you can kind of do whatever you want. Uh, but he's going to play some defense here, it looks like. Oh, he's taking it back. Maybe he's considering... Oh, he's considering maybe where there's there's a B or an M unseen that can go next to the Y to make my or buy and, and hit that uh, that double word score pretty hard. That's probably what he's thinking, but he's, he realizes that there are no Bs and no Ms left. So, yeah, it's also uh, interesting, yeah. like, nobody's mentioned, uh, we haven't mentioned that he could just play Ox or X or XI underneath the WET and wedded. But once again, I really think this was a very uh, rational decision uh, you sacrifice a few points just for, for better control over the board. Um, so, yeah, this is, again, a top-level find by by Max. And he'll draw bingo, too, just uh, just because, and it'll play on the top, and I don't think Hank's in any position to be blocking the board right now. So um, Flinder, the pull for Max, and it'll play making R-E-D in the second row. Wow. Hank has pulled invaders, but doesn't have the floating E he needs. He once again has no playable bingos. And at some point, if you're Hank, you do have to throw in the towel. Like, I'm just getting hammered here. Um, it's now 377 to 192 in Max's favor. Uh, you could take a last ditch, try to play like Devon above Wedded and throw that D in a triple-triple line, but it's going to get blocked like almost 100% of the time. There's nice bingo-prone and balanced letters unseen. I'm really just forfeiting spread, I think, if I play Devon. So I, I think what he's doing is fine. Just score some points and lose. Yeah, I agree. It's um, yeah another another unfortunate game for the for the underdog. Uh, but again, another great showing despite all of that. Um, and yeah, it just I think it's just a matter of time before Max finds Flinder here. Um, you, like when you're in these positions when you're up, like when you're doubling your opponent's score and then you have like a, a bingo on your rack, sometimes you're just like, oh, wow, really? <laughs> this I think this is what's happening. Max spots it, he's like, oh, okay, I guess I have another bingo. Um, and he puts it on the board. And wow, okay, Hank has drawn the blank, but now the board is kind of dead. Does he not have Does a not bingo kind of here? Dead. It's just dead. Oh man, this is rough. Not even yeah, a nine, nine play right? Oh, no playable gosh. bingos. And also no I, right? Um, well, he doesn't have an eye for no eyes anywhere. Yeah. Um, we've got everything updated on the widget. So nine unseen, two in the bag, um, E-E-O-P-T-T-U-U-Z. So, I mean, you're worried about big Z plays, but you don't have to worry about plays making IRED, I-R-E-D, um, which is nice. It's one thing. I think if you're Hank, you just drop your S, 29 points for just the S with quags and brooms. Leave one in the bag to introduce a little fog of war, and maybe you draw something, maybe you hit a nine through the disconnected IE or LW. I mean, I don't know. But at least yeah. try to keep your rack a little bit dynamic. Make sure Max has to think really hard. Though Hank is probably going to play the S and then draw the Z and then just be sad. Um, yeah, no, I think drawing the Z would actually be pretty good. Um, he'd be able to score something. It's I can't see anything that he'd draw to. I think the play just dropping the S, it's not like 
really, oh, I might hit something. It's really just like, I'm not emptying the bag. I'm giving my opponent the chance to empty the bag and not know what letters they're going to have in the end game. And I'm going to have good letters in the end game no matter what. So it's just a very good tempo decision um, to just drop the S. And uh, yeah, I hope we see that. And I mean, maybe he can draw into some nines. I'm trying to look through that IE. But yeah, even if he does, it's likely Max will just block. Yeah, I mean, maybe you're trying to find a, or draw a bingo that plays with Iyard as well, but I don't, I don't think that's happening. I don't know. I would just play the yes and be sad and go to the next game. Yeah, it's possible there's a little bit more nuance to this position where you maybe want to like go for something um, like an ET draw for absence. Oh, that doesn't work. Something, something on the top. Uh, as well as like you might want to go for like something specific maybe like playoff ed for six um the first e and wedded or the second e and wedded and just make make max think about it maybe you can draw something on the top row as well uh but yeah anyways as this game is is dwindling uh want to thank everybody for watching as well uh this is game two of three the canadian scrabble classic i think we're at 100 viewers right now that's pretty awesome yeah, not bad for a Friday night. I can't oh, I spent imagine. Z again. Yeah, you did. You did. We've been dropping the ball, both of us. Um, chat, I'll let you guys take decide off the what, penalty, what the penalty is going to be every time we call it a Z instead of a Z. Since this is a Canadian Scrabble Classic, it's got to be a Z this weekend. So what do I have to do when I make this error? You tell me. We'll figure it out. Um, but... All of the Canadian Scrabble Classic, all 15 rounds will be right here on the Let's Play Scrabble YouTube channel. We may tease the first round like we did this evening in some other places on Facebook or on Twitch, but the majority of the tournament's going to be right here. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, make sure you do. Josh Greenway uh, broadcasts several tournaments from this channel every year. This is where you're going to get a lot of the exciting action and uh, speaking of exciting action, while Hank figures out how to deal with this rack, he's looking for bingos. But tell us a little bit more about this Montreal tournament that we'll see broadcast here soon, Josh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but before I, I mention that, I just want to point out this might be the position where we wonder if Wally is going to be hooked with an E, right? Because Max has like Quate or Equate there. Um, but, okay, Montreal. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But it keeps quite in the in um, in the. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay, the Z is in the the ah the Z is in the bag. <laughs> okay, Montreal Z Z Z Z Montreal tournament um, Memorial Day weekend slash Family Day weekend um, in Canada. If you're Canadian and not from Quebec, in Quebec there isn't a holiday that weekend, but we're hosting a tournament. See how that makes sense? Not really. That's fine. It's a great weekend. Um, that's when the Montreal tournament has always been held. Um, this time we're going to be directly in the middle of downtown. Uh, last year we were a little bit, uh, a little bit away from downtown, but still pretty, pretty central. But uh, yeah, new hotel this year. Um, amazing, seven thousand five hundred Canadian dollars donation i believe um, oh. so just adding so much value uh to the prize pool we uh we're very happy in scrap community when we get any sort of um sponsorship money or slash donation uh to prize funds so uh yeah really exciting stuff uh there's gonna be so much promotion though uh coming up uh and we've only just gotten started with the promotion um but yeah, it's going to be a great tournament. I invite everybody to come to my city. Uh, I'll show you around. You'll have a good time. I'll treat you well. Uh, yeah, Memorial Day weekend in May. We're hearing it's actually 2,500 Canadian and 5,000 American as is the donation. So for those who like Monopoly money, you've got it. And for those <laughs> who like terrible paper money, T-E-A-R, but also make um, you can get that at the Montreal tournament. I am actually doing what I can to try to make it to this one. I might be in Canada that month anyway, and if I can, I would not miss 
thing. Otherwise, I'm sure I'll be in the commentary box, but I'm going to get a piece of that action one way or the other, no matter what. A shout out to uh, everybody who made that tournament possible and puts it all together. Um, Hank drew you, left the Z in the bag, as Josh said, and again has a rack that looks like, well, I've got to be able to bingo, right? There's got to be something, maybe some cool play, but this board is so mucked up at this point that, no, there are still no playable bingos for Hank. It has been a killer debut on stream. Not that he really did that much wrong, except drew pretty poorly. Uh, yeah, he gave himself uh, fantastic board. chances. Yeah, he made some really awesome, awesome plays. Maybe not the most accurate, uh, but just demonstrating that he understands the game of Scrabble, and that's all that matters. You can fix words. You can't fix not knowing how to play. So, uh, yeah, he's only only going to be going up from here, I think. But um, Yeah, cool stuff. Yeah. Um, his best options in game wise, you want to take away the one good Z play that Max has and ensure you go out and two at the same time. The best Z play is Zit or Tiz mm -hmm. through the I in Avid. Um, so if you can try to block that while guaranteeing yourself good outs next turn, that looks like his best end game. But at this point, I don't think through end games like this too much. Wow. Optimal end game is. Blank A R N S, where you make the blank a T or something or a B. I don't know. Um, I don't think so. Because you like, hold isn't there. S yeah, but isn't there no spot? Five. Isn't there no spot for the Z after you block? Was is there? Was oh was oh my god was okay. So yeah, okay then maybe maybe that's right. Maybe I'll trust the engine. But sometimes in in positions where. Um, often in positions where somebody can't play a tile, once you block their spot, uh, the, the engine is not going to give the correct end game sequence. But yeah, in this case, okay, there is still was for 15. Um, yeah, uh, as long as you go out in two here, it's not a huge, huge difference either way. Um, and I think Hank is going to do that. He's designating his blank before putting the play on the board. Another debate, another debate. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> I always, I only designate my blanks before I put them on the board. And the fact that it makes people really angry, I think is funny. <laughs> uh, the issue with this play, though, I don't know if he's saving himself more than one out play once, uh, once Tiz comes down or is it. Um, so maybe, yeah, maybe a little bit of a, an error in this in this position for Hank, but yeah, what what can you do? I mean, this this game kind of sucked for him. Um, he should have been able to bingo with that blank. Like he had such such nice stuff to go with it. But just yeah, what can you do? A very very clinical game from Max's side for sure. Uh, but yeah, like you said, Hank didn't do much wrong. He showed he showed his chops, and we'll be able to see him again maybe. I think it took me like six tries to win a game on stream. Um, and Hank certainly did his best and he tried. He just didn't get the stuff. He kept the board open and dynamic. And sometimes your opponent beats you to the bingo. Sometimes your opponent out bingos you three to one it, it, or three to zero rather. It happens. It's Scrabble, but nothing to be ashamed of here. And uh, hey, maybe we'll see him again this weekend. Speaking of the rest of this weekend, uh, we have one more game this afternoon, and speaking of Montreal and Montreal's finest, uh, that game will be Michael Fagan against Jason Lee, so don't go anywhere. That's going to be an awesome game. We will be back here on the Let's Play Scrabble YouTube channel at 9.30 Eastern tomorrow, 8.30 for me in Texas, and 6.30 for you diehards on the West Coast with additional Scrabble content. Um, but yeah, don't, don't go anywhere tonight. We're going to have a really good game. Two awesome players, Jason Lee and Michael Fagan, both looking to win this event, both capable of winning this event. That'll be our final one tonight. Yeah. Looking forward to this matchup. I've seen these, these two play each other countless times at Scrabble club and at tournaments. Um, do you know what their head to head record is? Let's look, let's look that up. Um, yeah, you can. Uh, yeah. Let me look um, that up real quick. Tomorrow yeah, they're morning, both, they're both from my. Go ahead. 
So tomorrow morning we will show four games of CSW. We like to show those in the morning for our international audience. So uh, 9.30 Eastern will be four rounds of Collins. And then in the afternoon, we will shift back over to NWL for those games. And tomorrow night, there's also Trivia Night. So if you didn't make it out to this tournament, but you love trivia, consider making it out to this tournament next year. Or uh, Josh is really good about getting nightlife and after hours things going at his tournaments, Josh and Kieran both. So uh, find any of their events and there's cool stuff to do. They've done karaoke. They've got trivia going very often. I think we sometimes have after hours tournaments like blitz and variants and stuff. So no shortage of fun to have on these Scrabble getaway weekends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's always it's always a fun time. Um, I was definitely torn between going to the tournament and hanging out with you, Matt. But you know, quality quality friendship time. I love commentating. Um, you needed you needed some help for sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, don't you're you're not quite making me uh, FOMO about the tournament. But yeah, there are tons of fun events at all of the Let's Play Scrabble tournaments. And yeah, I have the answer for next game. As Tiz comes down, blocking, I think, Hank's only way to go out. Um, the head-to-head -head record between our next two players, uh, Michael Fagan and Jason Lee, is an even 12 to 12. So we're going to see a tie break um, for Ooh. their tournament record. Whoever wins will uh, have the edge. I, I believe that... In casual and club games, Jason definitely has the upper hand. But um, yeah, twelve and twelve, very good record. Um, for for um, I guess I mean Michael's way high rated than uh, way higher rated than Jason right now. But for a long time, it was the opposite. So yeah, I guess there's no surprise there. Twelve and twelve, but they might tie. We're, we're, are we going to see a tie? <laughs> I would love to be a tie. You know, as, this is the first time I've ever prepared a spreadsheet of like facts about the players so that we can port them in and do a little player profile as a teaser. And I was trying to figure out what facts and tidbits and all that should I put. Like, okay, the number of games played, how long they've been playing, some you know important feats. I thought about putting ties on there because there were some bonkers numbers. People have played over a thousand games who have like one, and then people have played like three hundred games who have four. It's like, whoa, okay, cool. Um, so I thought about it, but I didn't. I'd love to see a tie, though, this weekend, for sure. That'd yeah. be fun. They're super rare. It's one in every few hundred, I think, usually. Um, I don't have the exact numbers, but, yeah, it's interesting to see. And often when there's a tie, it's because one player messed up in the end game. As we see, DUE. So not, okay, not the best end game. People do, in tournaments, try to play a perfect end game because every point might matter um, based on the the tie breaks but yeah end games are very hard so do comes down uh, is that the final score there uh, the final score is coming um, let's see yeah do comes down jeez oh my goodness oh, my quackles exploding <laughs> oh no um, we'll get the final score for you guys in just a second. Uh, but yeah, unfortunate game for Hank, uh, but very well played. He can be, he can be happy uh, about the way he played this game. Um, yeah, hopefully someone will tell him he didn't do anything, anything egregious at all. Very, playing way above his rating. Absolutely. And yeah, Max is just so certainly strong, playing though. above his rating. Yeah. And we've just seen two top experts draw very well and play very well against players who also played very well. Um, you know, there's been some good scrabble. Sometimes you do a lot of things right and still lose by 200, though. So that's, uh, that's how it is. We are going to take just a quick little commentator break. We uh, will not be gone long because this game used significant time. Um, we will be back for one more game tonight. Again, that game is Michael Fagan and Jason Lee and round three of the Canadian Scrabble Classic. And uh, we'll bring that to you in just a few short minutes. Y'all don't go anywhere. We will be right back.
All right, folks, we are back. One more game to go uh, today in day one of the Canadian Scrabble Classic. Matt Canick joined by a frozen, unfrozen Josh Sokol. And uh, Josh, to up the ante, make things more Canadian, we brought up the hot sauce. So, okay, to make things more Canadian, I have some maple syrup, and I also have some hot sauce. But I don't know. I feel like... I, I could do both. If if we say Z again, I'm going to take a swig of maple syrup and then a swig of hot sauce. I think in that order. What about you? That sounds like it would make some incredible chicken wings, like half hot sauce, half maple syrup, sweet and spicy. I already owe a little punishment because of my previous transgressions with the last letter of the alphabet. So... I brought up some of Austin's finest yellow bird hot sauce, and we're going to drop some on my tongue, and I'm going to suffer. Oh, already? Okay, oh. hold on. <laughs> we're already doing it. We're doing it live. Oh, jeez, that was a lot. Woo! How hot, how <laughs> hot is crazy. yours? How hot is uh, yours? Sriracha. Is Sriracha? Oh, this isn't going to work. Hold on. Yeah, it's like imitation Mine Sriracha. Mine is way hotter than that. So I'm taking a little bit. People have seen me on stream take this. This hot sauce is extremely, extremely spicy. Is this going to focus? No. It might not focus. We're looking at your, your face. It should, it should focus. Come <laughs> on, camera. Okay, whatever. It has the maximum Ooh. hotness level. It's 120,000 Scoville units. Uh, but yeah, we're ready to preview the players. Uh, they've sat down, I think. Um, oh man, yeah, you're you're coughing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ooh, I gotta get that letter so, right. Okay. Both players are one and one. Uh, Jason has a slightly better, uh, slightly better um, spread, slightly, slightly better tiebreaker. Uh, currently rated eighteen seventy, but he's been over two thousand for a lot of his career. Michael just achieved the coveted rating of two thousand, um, I believe, in his last second to last tournament. Um, yeah, I know these players very, very well. Uh, what do you know about these players, Matt? I know quite a bit. I like to spend time up there in Canada. Um, I'll talk more as they get the tiles going. Let's give them the all clear because I'm sure these guys want to get to bed. It's already 930 there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I played both of these guys a number of times. Jason is one of my favorite players to watch because I find that he's very creative and very tactical, very methodical, and just kind of out of the box. He might not have the strongest word knowledge at times. I don't know the last time he's actually touched a word list, um, kind of coasting on what he had 10 years ago in his prime. But he's able to improvise and make up for those word knowledge deficits with some really cool stuff. And Michael, I mean, I need, he needs no introduction. He won a North American championship. So clearly this dude knows what he's doing. And he's only getting better. I've seen him on stream at that Nationals. He played all right. He won. Um, but he's been playing better and better, I think, in the last 12 months or so. So with that, we are underway, Jason, to play first. A-E-F-N-N-V-Z. And what do you think? We might see a new word. We might see F-A-V. But I like Fez here. F-E-Z for 30. You have preferences between Fav or Fez or maybe Faze in this situation? Yeah, I like Fez here. I think it's it's simple. You have the A for za. Um, it's quite defensive. I think it's pretty clear. Um, sometimes you like to keep the Z on your rack um, for future turns, but I think in this case it's worth it's worth the extra points. And he already has it aligned. Um, I'm glad we're getting this Z out of the way early because I'm not ready to take any more hot sauce shots just yet. But uh, all right, Fez, it is Zed unloaded, and we are underway. Jason leads 30 to 0. As Michael E E I R T T U. Ooh, these racks are rough. These racks are yeah. very rough. Do you play Ute for 10? Like, plays like that are so sad, but there's just, right, what else do you do? Yeah, I think you can basically play Ute here, either with E F or F E. Um, or exchange. I think it's worth playing Ute. Um, it's worth mentioning as well, last turn, Jason could have unduplicated his ends by playing Zen, 
but for the six fewer points and keeping the F and the V together, it's actually not even worth, uh, I think, a single point to do that. I think the ANNV is, uh, leave is probably even better than AFNV. So you have the V are so clunky together. Um, Michael's looking at Etui, um, which is pretty dangerous, making IF. That would put the E right above the double letter score uh, for four spots away from the triple, three spots away from the triple. So uh, I would much prefer him playing U tier, but Etui is also a fine, a fine play. I mean, I speak all the time when I do commentary about how I hate vowels. I almost prefer ERT to EIRT as a leave, but I really hate stringing that E next to a double letter square. I'm not willing to play a TUI here. It's got to be U. You've got to keep things a little bit tighter. You can't just give Jason 50 points um, with an overlapping play. I mean, he doesn't yeah. have it, but I can't know that. I think UTRI as well is, is worth thinking about U T E R I and I F. And there's also maybe just tuftier through the F you should probably generate a lot of plays here because the first plays you see at and Ute, you don't like them. Like no one wants to make a move like this on their first turn. Uh, but Michael, yeah, I think, uh, he's seen enough. He's, uh, he's ready to play Ute, uh, for, for 10 on points. Top. Yeah. Uh... It's interesting. interesting. The reason to do that would be that he's setting up REF for himself. It's a lot harder to overlap. Um, but yeah, playing underneath, you you uh, keep the E open in Fez for words ending in E. I think it's, a, it's I don't know, it's a close choice between <laughs> the two. I never really know what to do, but look at that. Yeah, this is exactly why Matt hates those positions. It's just sometimes you have this game. Everybody's had these games where you like have to make a play like Ute, and then you draw a o o, and then you don't bingo for three more turns, and you're scoring like twelve a turn, and all of a sudden you're down one seventy to forty five, and it's just sad. Um, you, you, Michael gave a very visible tell. I probably shouldn't say that on stream, but I just did. Did you see his head crane off to the side when he drew a o o? You don't want to give your opponent that intel, but. Also, man, AOO, it's hard not to react to that. You're thinking, I'm a bingo next turn. Uh, no, psych, you're not even close. Yeah, and Jason, surprisingly, very quickly playing Nav. I mean, I understand the play, but that's setting up an E. You pretty much know that Michael has a second E with Ute. Um, he would usually not do that and not keep a second E. So it's kind of interesting. I might have, I mean, it's obviously... Uh, 21 points rather than zero, but I might have considered exchanging in that position. Keep the blank and get rid of the Q and the V. I know I would have thought for more time on that turn. That was, uh, I mean, it's easy to get tilted by like drawing a Q into your VN, but like, I, I, I don't know. I, I would have gone slower there for sure um, rather than just set up this big spot. You know, for all, all we know, this could be odious coming down as a double or double double instead, and you're going to be kicking yourself, but. Uh, Jason dodging a bullet with this one. Just O tier comes down. I would have played Uri for sure. O O R I E. Uh, kept the T instead of an O. But this is what Michael's opted to do. I think a couple back to back. Like what? What are y'all doing right now? Kind of plays. But the game is going to Jason Q A T. Like just go. You should have already played Q A T, right? <laughs> no. Again, like uh, there, it's worth. When you have a blank and a Q, it's worth thinking. Like maybe you have some 50, 60 point play. Uh, but yeah, this, this is very obvious in play. hindsight. The second best equity play, according to Quackle, is QAT blank. Just put the blank <laughs> at the end. That's yeah. how much better got it the other option. That's incredible. <laughs> and not um, a good pull for Michael to his lone O. Again, a reason why he might have wanted to keep a consonant for a small point sacrifice. Uh, it, it ensures a little bit more balance. Um, and he sees he sees a very nice six letter word of halu, which does play with loot. Um, but that keeps a lone V, which is just one of the worst letters you could possibly imagine keeping. Um, so yeah, this is not great for Michael, but halu might be his best option. It's got to be. Uh, hello, one of those kind of word knowledge check too, but like you can spell hello basically any way you want. Just put H blank, LL blank, or blank blank, 
and just put any valves you want in those holes and it's almost always right. Um, I don't know that I've ever even guessed wrong on one. You can make hilloo, hilloo, hello, 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 like just do whatever you want, dog. Just and, and that's what Michael's done here. But this one is probably one of the rarest of the bunch that you could draw. So nice flex for Michael, knowing that this is good and playing it. Yeah, and to people wondering if you should have played hello uh, instead while we get the scores updated. Um, H-U-L-L-O in the same spot, keeping the O with the V is almost definitely not worth it. Um, and yeah, the reason for that is the O and the V just go terribly, terribly together. And so it's not even, it's not even worth, uh, not opening that, that hot spot next to the second O. So I think this is a very good decision by Michael, knowing that the O and the V are not friends. Um, so Jason, Jason is going to awesome. bingo here. But Jason has one sick, nasty, awesome bingo. I'm not saying any more than that just yet. A little puzzle for Josh now that you have that bit. But drawing a bingo with the G to front hook Odier, you're looking at Wagand. That's what Jason's doing. Wagand and Godier for 78. 95 is available this turn. Yeah, I'm looking through the EN. Um, man, what could it be? Is it it's through, not the, through the like, end. It's not through it's the not end. Through the oh my god! Is it what? Uh, I'm double hoping people double. Ch chat. So it actually fits through the. Yep, yeah, poundage oh, wow. was spoiled by chat. Poundage wow. with the blue key for ninety-five. That would be a flex for Jason if he's able to find it. I don't think I'd even look wow. there. That's crazy. I did. I was looking at maybe starting with the N, and I quickly dismissed any words starting with the N going through that U. Poundage, you have to make the blank the first letter and hook a U. So few letters to U. This would be incredible find by Jason. But, uh, yeah, it looks like he's, uh, he's seen enough, and he's going to play bondage, it looks like. Uh, and Godier, All right, bond obviously a very, very, very good play. Yeah. But, uh, man, that would have been incredible. And look, it's in the right order, too. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> oh, he's going to be so oh, upset when he realizes that he put a, could have played those letters in the exact same order somewhere else. Uh, I hate when I that happens. Getting to watch nice Scrabble on the stream like this is so interesting because you see players of different ability levels. We just saw Joey Malik do some nutso stuff with like a begging and finding the most optimal, you know, sequences, milking every point out of every rack. And then we watched Max Panage do the same thing, turning in fairs into sans serif and all that. And then Jason just, I mean, poundage is so hard to spot, but I wonder how many players in this room spot that. Maybe zero. Maybe there's two or three, but uh, Jason, at least tonight, was not one of them. Yeah, and it's always a, like a, it's a it's a probability. Like he, anybody in this division can spot that if they know the word, but just actually spotting it, I don't know. I would give any player maybe like twenty percent chance tops of seeing something like that. That's crazy. The blank. I mean, if, if you put it out as a puzzle and say there's something here, like okay, I think most people could eventually find it. But just to spot it over the board, knowing not not knowing there's a puzzle, not knowing there's a solution, looking for it and then finding it. I don't know. Here's how Scrabble you find out. the word. The way you find the word is once you draw your letters, you spot it immediately before Michael block seems to block the spot. You start looking for double doubles. And if you see poundage plays before Michael puts down Holu, which he played very quickly then you would probably have a good chance of recognizing that it's still fit. But yeah, that's, again, another reason, or it's the first time I'm talking about this, playing fast can be extremely useful uh, for situations like these where you're just putting the time pressure on your opponent, not letting them even think before you make your play. Um, so yeah, crazy stuff. That is the exact logic I use when I just play recklessly fast for no reason. Um, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm definitely inducing mistakes, so it's okay to play fast like this. So thank you for wow. uh, enabling my bad behaviors. What 
Michael started putting down FLIC up top. Why wouldn't he play that with OF for the same score? This was a crazily aggressive play by Michael. I think he maybe just didn't recognize that he could play the same word vertically. I think he wants to open the volatility. He's down over 100 points already at this point. Um, I don't know that you need to do that, but I don't know that I'm smart enough to answer that question either. It's got to be deliberate here. You know, FICO to the O or Flick and OF are obvious plays. And look what he's done. Now he's in base. Michael had a plan. Four-dimensional chess. Wow. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about the score there. Um, I was just thinking about the position. No, this, this actually makes sense in hindsight. Um, it might not be right because you're just giving jason easy plays maybe he's going to play cagier here um get some easy easy scores but you're doing good things to the board so yeah i think actually in hindsight um i was a little bit hasty there <laughs> judging that play uh did not think about the scores at all yeah, yeah if you play um, if you play fleek with of it's just yeah. not yeah it's not good for the board So Jason's going to have to make a bit of a sacrifice on his leave. He's getting 30 points, um, but E-Y-I-N-G looked to be a really nice play for him through the N and bondage. 27, clear up all this muck. And instead, he's going to have to hold I-Y to address the threatening spot that Michael just opened up. So, you know, it, it looks like it is going to work out at least to some degree in his favor. Though while this rack looks promising, that UV combination is killer. And it's going to prohibit Michael from having any playable bingos on this turn. And I can tell you right now, Jason shouldn't either. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. Those eyes. Uh, I mean, that's IY. Like, it goes poorly a lot. But, man, uh, it's ugly to look at when it does. Yeah, that's that's very sad. Um, so it looks like okay, Michael's looking at ERUV here. Um, he could just play VUM um next to the u8 next to the hu and halu um is he thinking of eruvims or just eruv oh my god please don't play eruvims eruvim is good but if you know anything about the hebrew language you know you can't put an s on that huh i don't think he's gonna end up playing that but he's probably wondering if it's a word uh, but yeah, crazy draw for Jason too. So Michael's going to have a chance to come back in the next couple moves, even if he doesn't have a playable word. Um, so he's, huh? Oh, he's playing. He's playing it. Oh no! Oh no! There Go are some words one, like two, this. Three. That's the thing. There are some ah. words like this: cherubim, seraphims, but. But yeah, those aren't, those aren't Hebrew. Those aren't putting I am at the back of your word. But the clock is running. Most Michael's on hold. Michael's on hold. Jason does not like this at all. I I can tell he does not think this is a word. Um, but like you said, I don't know. Maybe he hasn't studied so much. Uh, I know Jason just recently uh, bought a house. He's focused on that, um, and yeah, it's possible that he's uh, oh, but having second comes. thoughts. But he, there he goes. Okay, the challenge happens. The big and, challenge. Yeah, All very right. big. All right, let's the challenge computer cam, cam is a cool innovation. I love that we have this. And a little selfie time. The play is invalid. I'd love to get a microphone over that cam at some point but also i'm afraid of what we might hear whether it's profanities coffee housing or absolute silence like none of that sounds like it's we need to put on the stream right <laughs> yeah i mean this i think it's a, I think a, sh a weakness of michael's and maybe not a strength but definitely uh, jason's word knowledge is uh far superior to michael's uh, even if he's rusty uh, Michael does not like to study words. Um, and yeah, that's that's definitely the one thing that's holding Michael back from me. 
maybe one of the best, if not the best player in North America, although he has achieved the 2000 rating. I know for a fact that he has not studied um, a significant portion of the dictionary. Jason has, at least at some point, and Jason has a very strong background with the small words, the other words, because he was a top bottle player for many, many years. So those words just, you know, they just become second nature of the four and three letter words and uh, some, some five letter words as well. But yeah, it's definitely, definitely showing some, uh, some unfortunate uh, realities when it comes to um, word knowledge. And uh, yeah. Jason ahead over a hundred points here. He doesn't have great options, but I think he's gonna he's gonna play something like Wiley, uh, deal with his his duplicated eyes. Yeah, this this turn just becomes so much more complex when you know Michael's rack because uh, oh god, if I play Wiley, like. Am I addressing all the threats? What are the threats? You have to sit here and figure out, does he have another bingo? You'd hate to get a free turn and then not block the bingo with knowledge of his rack and let it happen the next turn. So Jason's got to think long and hard. Is there anything Michael can have? And then if I open the board at all, am I giving him anything that he needs? These turns are so hard when you have perfect knowledge of your opponent's rack. Um, but Wiley is not going to give Michael anything back. And is it going to be a way for him to start working out of this rack, uh, which is something he's definitely looking to do? Yeah, I was wondering if he was going to play it on the left side, um, which he's doing here for uh, for a little bit less, just so as not to give back like M U R E S maybe, um, or just M U and M Y. But then look look what he's just given up is a roof and Y E for thirty two opening a triple triple. Oh. That's true. Oh yeah, this has That's been overlooked for do. sure. I think a little too. Is Michael there also Jason. going to overlook it? Because he's looking at Vum now. I think you definitely want to play a roof here in Ye for thirty-two. So wow, is this going to be some a case of double blindness here? Um, I mean, Vum like it, it's so easy to just play vum holding ers blank and scoring 25 man like why would i do anything else but a i think is exactly what michael wants to do here and he's tunneled in he, he saw this play before wiley come down and he hasn't noticed the new option that's become available i don't know maybe you don't want to put the v out there and give give jason easy access to a triple i, I think it's reasonable i just don't know if he considered it at all and i don't think jason considered it either very interesting. Um, Jason's as rack has improved out, a little bit. Uh, as it turns out, Iruv would have given back Aviary for a gazillion points out of this rack. So uh, perhaps Michael playing 40 chess doing the right thing there. Um, so don't question the methods. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. Uh, these positions are really hard when one player knows what you have and you know that your opponent knows what you have. Um, sometimes you want to sort of obscure obscure your your options for the next turn and i think vum does a, a better job at that than a after a jason knows what's going on after vum jason knows that he can't stop michael most of the time that he has ers blank he's going to bingo just like 80 percent of the time somewhere on the board and he's just better off just doing whatever uh but that's maybe why the play of a was better because it sort of forces jason when he has some awkward tiles to deal with the possibility of the v being open And Jason now has to figure out this rack. The, the clear equity play, YA and Airy in the same spot Eruv would have gone. That's 32 points, clears up the rack. AIP is an okay leave. But how scared should you be of opening the board with this lead? Why in the fourth spot doesn't sound that bad. But if something like Clay Eist comes down and you know that Michael has a blank and an S, he's, you know his leave was ERS blank, like... Can you put the Y there with that knowledge? Yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I guess Jason is in a tough position. Um, but I don't think I don't think you can play Airy here. 
ERS blank. Like you're going to give Michael triple triples a non-zero amount of the time, a decent amount of the time. Um, yeah, I think you you're better off playing something maybe on top of the OND PIA perhaps or something like that. Um, maybe even just rainy because uh, you know that Michael has another R, so he's maybe less likely to be able to use the R in Rainy. Do you try to block the left side? Like, I think the most likely bingos are going to happen in the N column alongside Kajir. You know he's got the E, you know he's got the R, like RE bingos will play immediately. Um, but it's a big sacrifice, I think, to try to obstruct that lane. You can play Airy and AR, uh, doesn't score well at all, but at least it takes away the bingo line. If he does bingo, then you get a triple back. But that's a big point sacrifice versus like a yin or rainy on the top. Yeah, he's going to opt to play a yin here, AIPR, keep his rack flexible. And if Michael bingos and opens the board, you want to be able to pounce on that. I think this makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's not the, the nicest option. You're opening a triple for your opponent, but the ovum spot was already there. Um, hooking the O into Bum, so you're not really opening that much. Um, and yeah, okay, it looks like Michael's gonna bingo probably. Jason just oh, paranoia. Is he gonna, yeah, paranoia. Yeah. But Michael has bingos. Uh, so Michael is a bunch of 70 point, 74 pointers. Two of them use the A at the top, a Spurser and a Surger, but several don't. He's already set up servers on his rack, Naves and RE as well. And there's one more cool one that I won't spoil yet for the chat. But a lot of 74 pointers. If that A at the top stays available, Jason's going to crush it. He and has it will Tesser. Stay oh. No, he doesn't have Tesser. I... Wow. So no. um, this is interesting. I think Jason's probably already spotted Paranoia. He's going to play it particularly if, if I know anything about, about Jason's demeanor. Um, but he's probably going to look <laughs> through the S as well. Nothing through the S, nothing to the S. You're going to have to play Paranoia, and what a more fitting word to play, leaving a triple-triple exposed with a lead. But you've got to do it. Paranoia for 83 is a great draw for Jason. Yeah, definitely. So let's see. Let's see if he spots it. It's weird to think about a third A giving you an eight-letter word. Um, but I, I think I believe, I believe Jason's going to spot this. And when he does, he's just going to play it. There you go. There we go. Paranoia. And that looks very, very good for Jason, considering what Michael has. Um, are we, are we getting the scores updated? Oh, uh, now we are. Sorry, we are piloting yeah. a new system. This is my second time running the score widget while I do commentary. Uh, so bear with me and chat, keep me honest. Josh, keep me honest. I might have to get a second hot sauce for uh, this other thing that I'm going to mess up a few times. But hey, I got to practice. So uh, yes, updated scores now, 316 to 175. And Michael with an awkward, awkward rack has got an uphill battle to get back into this game. Yeah, this is a weird one. I mean, you have some cool options like cleft, K-L-E-P-H-T through the L and Wiley, but that doesn't really address the problem, which is that you want to get rid of your J, score with it, and then bingo as soon as possible. You're down over 100 points. So yeah, very, very rough spot for Michael here. Yeah, I, this is where I start shaking my head. Like, I, I think I'm, I think I'm losing this game. Um, K H E T plays to the left side of K G R for 44. Depth plays on the right side or left side of Wiley, making T W O and H I. That's 42 holding J K. Hashtag Joey Kraftchik. Um, Kai that plays through the Y in Wiley, or you can play K H E T S to the S in servers. I think you have to leave the S at the bottom of the board alone and try to create a second opportunity here. But there aren't really plays that create good opportunities for you in the future that open the board the right way. This is a tough position, and I think you just throw in the towel and either hit depth 
or Ket and just score some points. I assume that the play that Michael made was servers. Um, I'm almost certain. Because uh, when Michael has, especially when he's played a phony earlier in a game, he's way likelier to just play like words he's 100% sure of. So I assume the blank is a V um, rather than a G. Um, but uh, yeah, some, some very nice options for Michael. The problem is like the score is just so far from what he wants it to be. Uh, but he's spotting, he spotted Ket, which again, scores very, very well, but also leaves him with the J he doesn't really want. I guess he's somewhat likely to draw an A. Well, there's only two A's left for Japed through the E of, of uh, servers. He's likely to draw a decent play with the J next turn, but he's going to have to be patient. I think this is a good play. It's all you can do. Um, this game is feeling more and more over all the time, but it's all you can do and just see where this takes us. Maybe you draw A-A-E-N. Oh, I thought I might manifest it, like Japan or something. But um, yeah, not there. Not there at all for Michael. There's the, the customary head crane when he draws more garbage into his already garbage. That wouldn't be, uh, that wouldn't be very good if you called Japan because there wouldn't be a spot for it. Um, that was really oh, weird of you to call that. So I'm glad it didn't happen. Um, so Jason looks at is looking at Bingoist. Please tell me Do he's it. not going to play that. That's hilarious. <laughs> I feel like he's he's just uh, having a little laugh here. But I mean, it's close to Bongoist and Jingoist. It could very well be that he's confusing a few words and that he's going to try this. Okay, he's. My heart is racing here. Uh, if there's one thing Jason can do to blow this game, is his phony. So I think he's going to be a little bit more conservative here and uh, go for something he's more sure of. But yeah, um, yeah, just block the S here, I think. And here, you're doing great. Boring or boings. You guys want to learn a word if you don't know this one already? There's a five, the anagram of biogs, which he could yeah. play to obstruct Bi-gos, the S. Yeah, yeah. B I G O S is a, a little five. Just a fun one. He shouldn't almost ever play it, especially when it has a valid anagram, but now you know it. B I G O S, sticky S. Well, she honestly, man. Boring. Doing something like that is a great idea in positions like these because your opponent's going to challenge way more often than usual because they're in such a bad position. If there's a word they don't recognize, they're very likely to just say, oh, my best chance of winning is if yeah, this word I don't know is, is invalid. So yeah, something like Bygos actually has a lot of... Uh, but yeah, points of the mound is pretty decently, pretty... Balance to his tea leaf draws an yeah, S. That's, that's, that's a good goal. And, Wayne Scott and yeah, stuff like that. Over. If he can throw floaters, he won't, but you know. Uh, and Michael's just found more muck. I think at this point, you just have to play Tempt through the E in servers. Te- uh, oh, Teddy plays beneath Paranoia, T E D D Y, holding J E M P. Maybe. Yeah, where can you play? Maybe. I don't think you can play Tempt. I don't think you can play Tempt, right? But yeah, I think Teddy, Teddy makes sense. He can draw into like Jumpiest, maybe like Jump Rope, stuff like that. Pajama, like there's some, some big, might even Pump Jack. That's not available though. The P and Paranoia, how much would that score? Any quick math? Quick maths in the chat. Yeah, where's Mac when you need him just instantly? 143, I think. I think 143 for Pump Jack. Yeah, Bygos uh, in the NWL lexicon is a, is a yes. I think BIGO might be a word. In oh, is, is BIGO good in columns? Oh, wow. Oh, you mean Tempt, T E M P E D. I thought you were trying to play Tempt with two T's. My bad. Oh, Must no, be yeah. American three, three. Nice. Oh, so Southern close accent. to jump rope. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Jump. Wait for any way you can get jump ropes. Yeah, maybe go for jump ropes. Like play PE. 
<laughs> no, you can't do that. The blanks are gone. There's no more P's to draw. Um, but Michael did draw a very nice play of like po poems. Oh no, he didn't. Joys. He has joys through the the Y and Wiley. Um, Jason verifying the tiles left. This is something you'll see very often as the game gets closer to its end. He wants to make sure that he's not going to be making a play that empties the bag or leaves a, a good amount of tiles in the bag for Michael to come back with. He definitely wants to play a lot of a lot of tiles here if he wants. Honestly, you might just play tawnies here through the E and servers just to I don't know score some points and and uh, yeah, yeah there's the game end faster. At this point, 11 in the bag, so if you can play off at least five tiles, uh, you can't get bingo bangoed, and the game's essentially over at that point. You're not going to lose to anything but a bingo bango, so, I mean, yeah. And a bingo think... bango, for those unfamiliar, is two bingos in a row. Uh, we have such amazing terminology in our in our Scrabble world, don't we? <laughs> yeah, this is oh, pretty easy. Wait, All he has to do is play, is play four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So playing Wino makes perfect sense. And Jason is very much aware of these uh, these tactics, making sure there are fewer than 14 um, tiles unseen, there, thereby not allowing Michael to use all of seven of his tiles two turns in a row. So yeah, anything four points or four tiles or more here is just going to seal the deal, I think. Um yeah. Yeah. So if he's playing off four tiles. That's 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 all there is to this one. And Michael's not even going to have the bingo anyway. So good decision by Jason. I think this is some great heads up pre end game thinking. Yeah. And this is what I mean. This is how I got good at Scrabble. Is Jason? He was uh, in around 2010. He told me, um, "Hey, do you want to get good?" And I was like, "Yes, I do." He's like, okay, let me help you. And uh, for over five years, Jason and I would play tons of games, would uh, talk about our games, analyze our games. And he was just a great teacher. Indeed, is a teacher in real life, chemistry professor in a college. Uh, I know you like that about him, Matt. Um, hey, good yeah. teaching man. Everybody likes a good teaching man. And um, yeah, absolutely was... Uh, essential in uh, getting me into uh, deep into Scrabble. Um, at that time, Michael as well was an up and coming player, but more of a lone wolf type of not taking advice, uh, paved his own path. Um, and yeah, won a national championship before either me or Jason Lee did. So, hey, um, two very, very strong players. For a long time, Jason was the top player in Montreal. He was uh, teaching me and Michael lessons most of the time we played. Uh, but yeah, the younger players have uh, have surpassed him at this point. Jason had a pretty low rating of under 1,900. Uh, but he's looking to uh, looking to do well this tournament. We'll see anything can happen. Um, extremely strong player. And uh, yeah, I think this game's going to him. Gonna put him at two and one. Pretty good. Pretty good record, all things considered. Yeah, Jason would need to fall out of his chair at this point to not win this game. It's it's done. There's not even a Hail Mary I can see for Michael that gets him back in. Unless Jason makes a severe blunder or something. Yeah. He's gonna be this able Michael's gonna be able to score. Go ahead. Yeah, this is a 2024 Canadian Scrabble Classic. This is the final game we have tonight. But if you're just now joining us, we are back live at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. We'll be showing four games of CSW in the morning session, four more games of NWL in the afternoon session tomorrow, and games on Sunday morning as well. If you haven't yet, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the Let's Play Scrabble channel. That is where all of the action will come to you from. We may also tease one round on some other platforms, but we'll pull it back here afterwards. Um, so like and subscribe, like this video, like all of the videos you watch that have Scrabble, because the more likes we get, 
the higher up the algorithm we get pushed. So always want to try to do that and get Scrabble going out there. I'll never stop giving this spiel as long as people keep coming out and watching Scrabble with us. Um, but yeah, 9.30 a.m. tomorrow means I'm waking up bright and early on my Saturday, but I'm excited to do it to watch some of these awesome CSW players. The field here has a lot of really good names, and we'll get some good Scrabble tomorrow. Yep. Um, unfortunately, yeah, of course, the sometimes as it goes, uh, all three games that we covered tonight were pretty one-sided, uh, but the, the beauty of Scrabble is that no matter what the score is, many interesting things are possible uh michael looking to try and steal uh victory out of the jaws of defeat here maybe looking to play joy uh maybe he can draw a huge play from the p in paranoia but um jason has very good technique when he's ahead and uh yeah you don't want to be behind over 100 points against someone like jason lee but yeah um it's gonna be it's gonna be a really fun day tomorrow. You said we're starting off with the Collins Division. We're gonna get, get to see some uh, very high rated action. Um, well, it doesn't sound right, does it? Uh, I should have said that. <laughs> uh, we have a twenty one hundred player in the Collins Division, newly crowned, I think, Matthew O'Connor. After newly winning. crowned twenty one hundred Grandmaster Matthew O'Connor, I just got that right. The early bird, thanks to Seth Lipkin in chat. We love you, Seth, uh, for giving us that tidbit. And we'll see if he can defend that rating tomorrow. We'll definitely try to get him on in the morning session. So I haven't looked at CSW. Yeah. Um, Michael's time is dwindling here. But yeah. He's trying to find something. Um, it's very selfish. Jason on his end has some pretty good pals. I don't think he has a full bingo, but he might get greedy, depending on what Michael does. Uh, if he doesn't see much possible uh, for Michael to do as, as the uh, tiles in the bag get more and more, um, what am I trying to say? As fewer and fewer tiles remain in the bag, you have more and more information about uh, the possibilities it looks like Michael's going for projects from the P, a very nice attempt. He's trying to draw the C and the T. Um, unfortunately, Jason has has the T, I think, the only remaining T, but a very good attempt on Michael's behalf. Uh, Jason's probably going to block the P anyway, but he's trying. Projects would score well over 100 points. So, yeah. A That's good what you got to do here. That's exactly what you got to do. Wonderful play. You know, you assume the E is what's going to get blocked. The E in servers is the obvious bingo line. Most people block there. You've got a fish in the other spot. Man, that's smart for Michael. I wouldn't maybe be giving away so many tells that you missed, but that's a great heads up play from Michael. Good job. Good job. Yeah, Jason looking at buttes uh, alongside the IL wall. wants to make sure there isn't something incredibly high scoring. Uh, for Michael, that's unseen. That might win him the game. Um, but I think with being ahead over 100, scoring around 50 points, I think that uh, Jason's going to be able to win no matter what here. We'll see what he decides to do, though. Project chat going on about yeah. player... Yeah, chat's going on about player titles and all that. That's something NASPA has toyed with in the past, kind of dabbled in, you know, who, what's a what's a master, what's a grandmaster, what's an expert? Um, is there a clear cutoff or is it over time kind of thing? But uh, those haven't been updated in a while, and I literally just decide what I want to call somebody now, whether I want to call them an expert, a top expert, a master, or a grandmaster. And I want this to be our system going forwards. So whatever Matt just kind of decides to say on a whim, that's your title now. Um, who, who's with me? At the top, we get some support for the, the, top three, the top. The top three to four hundred points uh, in chess points are grandmaster level. So I mean, these players are points of the top players. So it's, it's uh, very apt to the grandmasters, even if they don't have the titles. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's just I a did. different game than Scrabble 2. Chess, uh, there's a lot less luck. In fact, there's no luck, whereas Scrabble, obviously, as we've seen today, there's a huge luck factor as well. So, you know, you're not going to get 400 points up on everybody else. Even Nigel Richards hasn't done that. Uh, it's just kind of the nature of a beast with the luck factor like this. But I do wonder where the cutoff would be, though I do much prefer to be the arbitrary master of the titles. Indeed, indeed. So let's, hmm. I think there's, yeah, there's four in the bag. So I think Jason's considering not making a five or six style play and just playing you off. You can do it in different spots. You can play with PY or with, uh, through the E in servers, trying to block DU. So this is just wonder. I keep calling people Mac. I've been watching too many YouTube videos. We're not enough. Um, I just wrapped up with the audio. But, um, here. Uh, and if you can, please, I think uh, AIM is obviously going down to the last bits and looks like Jason's going to play B or just Butte, probably just Butte. Oh, he's playing the S as well. I, I think you want to make absolutely sure that your opponent does have the worst case nightmare bingo like you're not going to lose to it clearly michael was fishing for something you see a j and an x unseen like if you did hit whatever it is it's going to be a hundred let me put every point on the scoreboard that i can right now just in case it happens but we know that it won't as michael picked up the x and not what he was looking for yeah nice draw for he's going to be box turn with the uh, as well as the E of servers at the very least. So Michael's just going to have to maximize his score for this turn. And uh, yeah, unfortunate loss for him. Going to put him at two. This is going to be at two and one. Let's let the let's let the last moves play out. Uh, spread can be salvaged uh, from this game and uh, how ugly it's going to end up being when it's all said and done. All right, so I'm trying to figure what Michael can do. I guess he's got to figure out, you know, there's Deckhane through the Ian servers. Are there other bingos out or other out plays? Like, can I unload both the J and the X? If so, what kind of sequence do I need to follow? It's, I don't know, uh, it's a lot to think about. My quackle has exploded, so I can the end game and I'm kind of tired and talking at the same time. So I'm not going to solve this one, but. This is a big decision. You got to know, do I have one play or two? If I have one, I got to optimize it. If I have two plays, um, you know, I got to think through what's best, what's next best, or what do I do next turn? Um, all right, so Ox is going to be the play for Michael. That will put him up to a good even 300 points. A for uh, Jason that I saw back in. So Jason's going to go out. And that will be the end of this. I get 24 points off of Michael's back. Michael just barely managed to touch 300. We have three terrible games on board one. And I don't mean terrible like, people playing terribly. I just mean like the player just sitting on the right going second. I think he's averaging like 290 or 280. It's been, it's been brutal. So, uh, Hopefully tomorrow we get some better Scrabble. We'll definitely see more points scored in CSW tomorrow morning. I can tell you that much.
Yeah. So just trying to make sure the D word, um, like I said, is short words are very good. Michael is going to challenge this outplay, I believe. And yeah, the game is going to end 461 to 300. Yeah, Michael. Oh, yeah, it looks like he's challenging. Is he or is he just letting Jason? Yeah. Oh, and he's just letting Jason. Uh, Jason plays out play. Okay, interesting. And uh, yeah, a nice win for Jason Lee. I believe that we're having some audio issues. I don't know if if uh, people can hear everything, but um, yeah, unfortunately, both all three games, the player that going second just had a terrible time. There is a round of twenty point advantage. And Scrabble, but not 150. So um, we we'll get some better games tomorrow. Some better, some better audio. Some better everything. I'll try to work out things for you guys. And um, yeah, this is uh, the 2024 Canadian Scrabble Classic, third of its team. Um, I think we're just gonna uh, play play the stream out. I appreciate everybody coming in and watching. I've been Josh Sokol with Matt at 9:30 a.m. Eastern. Tomorrow morning, 6.30 Pacific, 7.30 Mountain, 8.00 Central, and all the other time zones. So uh, good to see all of you in the chat. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you all tomorrow. Bye.